Welcome everybody to Webinar 777, the global leader for life-changing webinars to empower dreams, transform communities, and disciple nations. Today is week number eight of Soaring 222, Discipling the Nations. The title of today's message is Explosions of Holy Knowing Through Art and Sound. And our special guest speaker today is James Nesbitt. Dr. Peter Wagner, Cindy Jacobs, <laughs> and other uh, top uh, leaders say that he's one of the leading prophetic graphics artists in the world. And I think you will agree with me that that's the case as he goes through his presentation today. James has chosen uh, to share a few slides, and then he's going to ask for input from the panelists and from the audience as well. So I encourage you to be typing in the chat box, the question box as we're going along. Uh, today, the Lord is releasing the sights and sounds of heaven. We're just excited. It's not just the sounds, the sights of heaven as well today. Today, your life will change forever. Holy Spirit is expanding your mind and spirit to new dimensions. I'm talking about taking quantum leaps today. And they will never return to their original size or shape. I'm Dr. Joseph Peck. My passion is creating a movement empowering dreams of millions of people globally through coaching, journaling, and life-changing webinars. And one of the ways to, uh, to keep headed toward a goal is with visualization. And so these images that you see today are profoundly prophetic, and I believe they're going to leave a permanent imprint in your mind, your heart, and your spirit. So be ready to receive. I just want to say welcome to uh, Gary uh, Beaton. Uh, I think most of you know him. There's a few of you who might not know him. He was an award-winning uh, producer, director, and entertainment exec executive in the television and motion picture industry for 38 years uh, before he, uh, he, he left his bread and butter uh, job to pursue his passion. And so his passion is Transformation Glory Ministries, uh, bringing transformation glory to people's lives, to uh, organizations, to cities, and to nations. And he's also the founder of Destiny Productions. So welcome, Gary, uh, to this live global broadcast. Thank you, Joseph. It's a joy to be here. Uh, welcome, everybody in the Soaring family. This is a treat like we have never had before. Uh, I'm especially excited, and so is as the whole team uh, together to have James with us. Welcome, James. It's an honor to be with you. Honor to be with all of you. Thank you. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm just going to comment uh, briefly about James. I first met James in person at the Kingdom Economic Yearly Summit in February 2011 at Morningstar Ministries. And so the humble person that you see in front of you is the same person that you'll meet, you know, off stage or if you're just talking to him one on one. And you know, he's he, you would never know that he's connected to so many uh, the top apostolic and prophetic leaders in the world by just talking to him because he's just so down to earth. And you can see on this screen that a portion of his assignment in the earth is a Habakkuk 2 assignment to write the vision and engrave it so plain, plainly through digital imagery. So anyway, as we said, welcome, James. And I'm just going to introduce uh, Pam Finley briefly. I think almost uh, all of you that are involved with the Facebook group, private Facebook group, know her. Uh, she's uh, her, her painting room is her sacred place. You know, that's where she goes to commune with God, and we're so fortunate to have her sharing the images with us, the soaring eagles with, for the soaring, you know, the, the, that we've been using for the soaring family. That's something that she designed. But you can see on the screen what she's done. Uh, she lives in uh, Australia um, and, and is an accomplished artist, and so that's why the Holy Spirit invited her to be on here with one of the leading prophetic artists in the world. So welcome, Pam. Thank you for choosing to be a part of the Soaring family and for part, for being a panelist today. Thank you, Joseph. Honored to be here. Okay, well, you're going to hear more from uh, Pam a little bit uh, later. We're thankful, we're humbled uh, to be able to use webinars, uh, the new Global Interactive TV to communicate with each of you today and uh, many other people around the world. We're thankful that the technology allows us to easily record the presentation and share it with so many people. 
Um, I'm gonna, we're going to call on Pam now to say our opening prayer, and then James is going to get started with his teaching. Lord, we pray today for the release of the flow of your creativity into the atmosphere. We ask, Lord, that you loose your anointing today in the prophetic arts. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Your kingdom of light shall arise on the earth, and we ask for a multifaceted, multicoloured understanding of your word today, Lord. We thank you for James, Lord, for what he is about to show us today, the prophetic arts that he's going to show us, and that it will speak to our hearts, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you're about to do today in the kingdom. And we ask for your cascades of living colour to flow through your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I hope you all heard that. That's a word from the Lord. Cascades of living color. Amen. Okay, well, James, you're on. We're excited here. We're excited here. This is the most inspiring PowerPoint I've ever seen in my life. Well, thank you for your kind words. Uh, I would like to say a prayer before I start just concerning this uh, image that you see before you. Uh, explosions of holy knowing. I, my, my prayer is that as we're talking today that this will be a, a beginning of, of, of an understanding of what's happening within in the body throughout the earth of these explosions of holy knowing. So I'm thanking you Father that, that we'll, we will have testimony that even while we're gathered this short time this afternoon it will be many many have, will have explosions of things they did not see or uh, they did not know and so we thank you for what you're doing in your body uh, releasing your glory in the suns in this hour so that's my prayer for this afternoon now Joseph we can go to the next slide uh, I want to talk to you about the season that we're in because uh, uh, we, we've, we've crossed over in 2010 uh, I have a part of my assignment as a prophetic artist is to listen to what major prophets are saying and capture that imagery. And in 2010, Dutch Sheets began talking about they were not just entering a new season in the earth, but a whole new era. Just the way it was in 1517 when Martin Luther nailed the 95 Thesis on the wall, that wasn't, it was marking a whole new era of light actually entering the earth realm. Uh, the printing press was invented, all kind of inventions just exploded uh, upon the, the scene. And so I'm saying to you that now we've entered into the, 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 the kingdom age, the beginning of the kingdom age. And so uh, light, is that's how come we're having a whole new dimensions of explosions of holy knowing, because we've entered a whole new era era in, in God's time frame. And so uh, what's happening though, most of us who were born before 2011, we've spent the entirety of our lives in another era. And so basically the cloud has moved now. And where we had camped before now, uh, we, we can't stay where we're at. We have to move with the cloud. And, and so there's a whole new sound, there's a whole new language, and the strategies of ministering to, to the earth are different. And so that's what uh, explosions of holy knowing do. Father releases his uh, strategies in the hearts of his sons. And so you can go now to the next one, Joseph, uh, but I just wanted to talk about that for a moment. We're in a whole new era. And so to this morning for just a minute, or this afternoon, I want to talk a little bit about these three three things, position and alignment and original intent. And so uh, when a master builder builds, he builds with a plumb line. You see I've got a plumb line over here uh, on this image and it has holy imprinted on it. Uh, and so what we're going to talk to you know, about a, for a moment or two is about our position and, and so that we are in alignment to uh, encounter holy explosions like, like breathing. It's all the time. Uh, from glory to glory, things are just exploding within our hearts. And it comes from by being in position and in alignment with Father's intent and with his original intent. So if you can go to the next slide, please, Joseph, we'll talk about that for a moment. Uh, and so... Uh, just take a look at this image. So uh, we all have spiritual fathers, and one of my spiritual fathers, a guy who's poured more into me than anybody, is a guy named Jim Chosa. Jim is a, a an Ojibwe brother. He's a Native American, and and he's my father. And one of the, this is one of the things, and you'll hear me say a lot of things that Jim Chosa says. That's what sons do. Is a, is that whenever you hear a son, sometimes you hear the father. And so, but but Yahweh is copyright owner of the earth. And so the earth, it says here in Psalm 24, 1, we'll start there today. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they who dwell in it. 
for he is found upon the seas and established it upon the currents and the rivers. So we are in alignment. Uh, the sons of God, are, he is showing in, in the holy explosions within us, he is showing the original intent of the copyright owner uh, that, that he's always intended for the earth, what it, what it will look like in the end. And so right now, uh, he's, it's, again, it goes all the way back to Genesis 1.28, the original mandate. God blessed them. He said, you be fruitful, you multiply, and he says, you take dominion over all the creeps. You know, and so that's what we're doing, uh, taking the minion over creeps uh, that has been creeping in on Father's intent for the earth. Uh, it takes sons to do that. Uh, next slide, please. And so uh, you'll hear me talk about original intent a lot this afternoon. Now, I'll explain more as we move on uh, on why I'm saying this uh, as, as we move on, but holy, from my experience, holy is the plumb line frequency of the universe. Just think about that for a moment. The, 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 the whole, holy, holy, holy. Uh, why does he have four living creatures? You can move forward uh, in this. Why are there four living creatures around the throne? Yeah. Uh, day and night. And, and they don't have 527 songs, they sing. They, they, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Now, there's a worship leader named Steve Fry, and it's my understanding that one time he was talking to the Lord, saying, Lord, it's going to get awful boring, just worship you in the clouds with, uh, uh, all, uh, through eternity. And the Lord says, let me tell you about the angels. Every time these four living creatures look at me, and they see a whole new dimension of me that they didn't see before, all they can say is, holy. So what we're seeing here, the throne room is filled with explosions of holy knowing, moment after moment. And so all the living creatures can do is say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. So this is my uh, first attempt. Well, it's actually not my first. It's the one I'm showing people, uh, my attempt to create throne room imagery. And I want to create a lot more. And Pam and, 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 and Vanessa and every other artist out there, I bless you today to create throne room imagery so that people can see what's happening in the throne room and so what it looks like. And as we all look at it from our different perspectives, we can help people in the earth see uh, the beauty of what uh, eternity is. And so this has the seven lamp stands at the front, you know, the spirit of revelation. Uh, that's all right, we can, we'll go on here now. Uh, <laughs> so what I'm saying to you, a part of our positioning is everything in holy knowing comes through the blood of the Son, and in the power of the Spirit. And so that's why uh, uh, there might be a people see a lot of things, but this is the way that the kingdom is manifesting in the earth, is through the blood of the Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. You can go to the next slide now, Joseph. Hallelujah. Now, uh, if I need to, well, I'll, we'll go in here before we stop. So how many of you, I want to talk to you about, remember this is about position, alignment and original intent. So this slide here talks about position in worship. And my question is, where are you standing? How many worship gatherings have you been in the past where people are standing out here asking the Lord to come? Let me ask, now go to the next slide, please. See, if you're here, you're wasting a whole lot of time because we are positioned in Him. And so what I'm saying to you, the, the enemy don't mind how long you keep asking for God to do what he's already done. Whenever you received him in your heart, he came. And that whole Greek word in Corinthians 5, 4, the word in means right in the center of. That's how come in our worship gatherings, I don't waste time in the outer court. I don't waste time in the inner court. Hebrews chapter 4 says, come boldly to the throne of grace in your time of need. So I start our worship gatherings with holy, holy, holy. I join right what the angels are singing, and holy explosions are already there, so they don't take you no time for the holy explosions to start happening in the room, because you're stepping right where the holy explosions are happening. So I'm saying to you in your worship gatherings, just just thank Father that He's there. He walked in with you. He walked in before He was there before you came. He's in you when you came. So just begin to worship Him. And I'm saying I'm encouraging you to worship with the four living creatures and see what happens in your meetings. It'll be a whole other level of explosions of holy knowings. Now, I can stop here. If anybody's got a hand raised, you raise your hand. If not, I'll move on. Okay. Well, I don't see no hands, so we'll move on. Joseph, are you good with that? Uh, 
We'll go to the next slide, please. Now, what I want to say to you is there are a whole lot of meetings, and you can tell. I, I was at a worship gathering, and, and remember I talked about earlier about we've, we've crossed over into this whole new era in the earth. Some of the songs that we are singing are not a part of this era. They're a part of that day. And I can tell you, if you begin to listen in your worship gatherings, it's like I was at a worship gathering one morning, and they were singing the song, man, it was plugged into the juice. So they changed songs, and the next song they sang, there was no juice on it at all. So Because you know why? The language was not accurate. It was not now language. And so it cannot produce holy explosions within the people and within that setting if the language is inaccurate. All right? So I'm saying to you, I bless everyone who's listening to this and who will listen to be sensitive in your worship gatherings to start listen to what, what we call it. Where's the juice? If you don't have any juice on it, get rid of it. All right? It might be a good song, but this is not about songs these days, my friends. Next slide, please. So here's what Jesus said in John 4, 23. A time will come, however, indeed, it is already here, when the true, genuine worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, in reality. For the Father is seeking just such a people as these, as his worshipers. All right? So uh, let's go to the next slide, Joseph. And so this is all about explosions of holy anointing. Because Jesus said, I only do what I see Father do. Now, I was teaching at, 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 a, at a gathering with Jamie and Jonathan Fitt, and, and after I, I came, to the, the lady said, this, this song has been on my heart all day, and whenever this is what you taught tonight. So listen to this. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. But listen to this third verse. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. So I'm going to repeat that last phrase one more time. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. So that means that there is a sound that drowns every other sound. There is a sound that is eternal that causes such a, a, a presence that every other thing is drowned by that holy sound. Now this is not this this was written in 1851. This is not new information, folks. This this is this, there is a sound that's been resonating forever that that now is coming to a maturity like the earth has never seen. So we go to the next slide, please. So, but I want to talk to you just a minute about this Ezekiel 47 river. Uh, uh, how many of you have ever been to a swimming pool and they got the kiddie pool? And so whenever you're at the kiddie pool, there's a certain language at the kiddie pool. There's certain sounds at the kiddie pool. But then whenever you get a little bit deeper, you can go into the big pool, but they still got a line across the middle. And because you don't have skills yet, you can walk on, on, on this one side, but you can't swim in the deep end yet. I'm saying to you that, that, that most of the worship in our nation has been performance-driven and entertainment-based. Why? Because we have been led by babes and children, not mature sons. Uh, the only place that whenever you can swim in the deep water, a mature son has to take you to the deep water. A babe or a child cannot take you there. And so the sound at the edge of the river is different from the sound in the middle of the river. Why? Because the water is shallower at the edge of the river. And so a lot of time we come into our gatherings and we want to be entertained. We want our favorite song. And if we don't get our favorite song, we're like little babes and children. We squawk. But I'm saying to you, there is a sound that mature sons govern in that's swimming on the deep end. And so what's happening right now is mature worshipers are rising in the earth, those who are maturing in eternal sound, in eternal purpose. And these are the ones that are releasing holy explosions within communities and congregations. So the false sound is being drowned out by those totally immersed and are only releasing the sound of the Father. That is where we're at in the earth right now. We're at a crossing over point where the water is going to get deeper and deeper and deeper as we step in. Uh, no hands yet, so we'll keep on going. Uh, so this is what's happening. What really happened at salvation uh, is, is beginning to, to manifest among uh, the, the mature sons. Whenever, whenever, you got, whenever you received Jesus into your heart, he came. When you ask him to come, the Lion of Judah came, and he resides in your chest. His words in your mouth are the same as his words in his mouth. That's what we need to own. A religion will not have you own that. 
but but but, the, but, the, but but governmental sons are what's rising in the earth now, and they know that they know who lives in them, they know who he is, and they know who they are in him. When you know who you are, believe me, every spirit knows you know who you are, and they know who you are too. And so that is what's happening in the earth now. This is a holy explosion in itself. If you can get a hold of this, your life will change because you'll, you'll begin to do what you see Father do more and more and more. Next slide, please. Because Jesus said in Luke 17, 21, Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So I am always encouraging people to sing what you see. All right. In our gatherings, we threw away the songs five years ago, and I'll tell you why we threw them away in, in a little while. But anyway, so what we're doing is we walk into a meeting, and we don't know what we're going to sing. We're just saying, okay, Father, what, what's on your heart tonight? And so as we begin to worship in holy in, in, in the throne room, then he shows us what we are supposed to sing in that moment, and holy explosions manifest. I'm not saying there aren't places for songs. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying there is a realm in deep water that the body needs to step into. And they are stepping into. That's why we're here this afternoon. Next slide, please. So what I've been talking to you about is another dimension of worship called governmental worship. It's about the court of heaven. And it's about even though in this image you can see this man standing on the ground, but yet, even though he's in that position in his body, his spirit, Ephesians 2, 6, says this. And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. And so what we're doing is, as, as we're in the earth, we're seated in heavenly places. And what you see in heaven, he wants you to release in the earth. So what he shows you on the inside, then our, our, our governmental release is then, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So as you see it in heaven in the courts, then you bring it to the earth and you release it through your mouth. And you say, this is what the Lord says. You make it a decree. This is the decree of heaven. And he has given you that in that moment. That is governmental worship. And so, Father, we thank you today that, 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 uh, that, that waves are breaking over every nation and governmental worshipers are rising and they're seeing what you're doing. They're, they're seeing the, the judgments rendered by the court of heaven. And, they, they, and they're bold enough to release them in their atmosphere right in the moment when you say, now is the time. Release what I've just shown you. And so we thank you, whether that be in artwork, whether that be in dance, whether that be in song, whether that be in writing, whether that be in a business transaction. We thank you, Father, that all the mountains are being visited with governmental worship. Yes. Amen? Amen? Now, if anybody got a hand up, we can go there. Yes, Glenessa. Yes, thank you so much for sharing this. Uh, mm, I can hardly even contain myself. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, I can hardly contain myself. I just really believe that the Father has been waiting for such a time for his children to come to the courts because the enemy comes day and night standing and accusing the brethren day and night. Day and night accusations are going forth against us. And we are standing outside somewhere, outside, outside. But God is saying, come up, come up here. Come and present your case so that I may prove you right. And so this message that you're bringing to move God's people from the outer court to bring them into the court of the Lord so that we can hear and get the writ from heaven on earth as it is in heaven so that then we can release God's government in the earth to begin to legislate what we see in heaven on the earth. And so this is just speaking so clearly to God's people here. Thank you. Amen. So we thank you, Father, that it's happening now. Yes. We thank you that revelation is, is, is exploding in the hearts of people everywhere. Yes. And, and, and that this is the army. This is what the earth has not seen. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Thank you, Father. Thank now, so let, let's talk about this understanding the now sound of governmental worship. God is always now. A part of the language I'm going to talk to you about in a moment, in the other area, now, if you're pregnant and, and, and you're going to give birth, it's okay to say the child is coming. He's about to get here. He's, just, he's going to get here real soon. But once you give birth, you can't use that language anymore. It has to be he's here. He's come. Uh, the baby's here. It's now. 
So I am saying to you that we've crossed over into the kingdom age, and Father's not getting ready to do it. He's not about to do it. He's doing it now. And so a, 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 a lot of our prophecy, if we keep saying, well, he's going to do it in the quantum dimension, if you understand it, you're putting it off by your own words to another day. And so I'm saying to you, God is doing it now. Now, what would it be if on a Sunday or wherever Gary's speaking, after he speaks, you have a psalmist come up, and the main points that Holy Spirit spoke through Gary, you have a psalmist come up and begin the whole congregation own those phrases as an anthem. So if we've, we've heard what Holy Spirit said, and then we've internalized it. And now the whole company of people sing it as an anthem, and we own it. Then when we go to our homes that week, even though we go, the anthem is residing in us wherever we're at on the seven mountains. So that anthem is invading all the mountains because of what we own together. As it, that, Remember when I talked, crown him with many crowns, lay him upon the throne, hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own? This is that. It's the heavenly anthem of us owning moment by moment in our gatherings what the Holy Spirit is saying in our cities, then going to our cities as a company of believers and releasing that sound, moving in the power of the heavenly anthem. It's now. All right? That, that, that's a powerful concept if you can grab hold of it. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to say this in a different way uh, with these images here because uh, it might be saying the same thing, but let's, let's see what Father does with it. Father governs through the obedient worship of mature sons. That's how we, we silence the voice of the accuser in the courtroom. Is the sons that stand up and say, hey, wait a minute. This is what Father says about this. Next slide, please. Gary, you can just keep pushing these probably because I'll just move pretty, I mean, Gary. Uh, Joseph, uh, you can push these. Uh, he, he went somewhere. Uh, the power comes out of Holy Spirit instruction. In worship, that, that's what we're talking about now. Sound as we worship Him, He gives Holy the Holy Spirit gives us instruction for for that moment, right right at the, that moment. Next slide, please, if we could. So what I'm saying, you you should see an arrow. Uh, so uh, I think we've skipped a few things. Uh, what happens? There should be an arrow when we when we enter in. Can, Gary, can, I mean Joseph, can we back up a few? About one or two or three. Can you go back? What happens when we ascend in worship? That is where he shows us from that courtroom position what he wants released in intercession in the earth right now. Now, we have some in our worship gatherings, they like to ascend and just stay here, you know, and just love him there. You know, that, that's good that you want to love him there, but i got news for you. He don't want you to just stay there loving him. You just don't spend all your life in your bedroom in your home. You come back out and you do your work. Well, we, we ascend in worship, but then what happens is we come down with what he's shown us in the earth, and we come down and we release what he said into the earth. Now you can go to the next slide, Joseph. So I want to say to you, it, it, it is a constant communion and flow of, 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 of ascending and descending. And so power comes out of this Holy Spirit instruction and worship. Now we can go forward one more. And so what he does then is the Spirit of Truth reveals the plumb line of truth needed in the now. See, he, he knows we're kids a lot of times, and if he shows us too much ahead of times, we just, go, we, get, we just mess it all up. So what he does in these moments of worship, he just explodes in your heart at the moment with a moment of holy knowing. Then what he wants you to do is release what he's shown you in that moment right then. Now, here's another thing I've noticed in our gatherings. I keep saying to people, you don't have to have the microphone. If he shows you something in your, in your seat, he wants you to release it right there. The angels aren't coming for the microphone. They're coming for the words that you have in your heart. And I call it releasing the sound of many waters. All right? And, and so that's what we want to do is get people where they're comfortable enough in their skin, not having to be entertainment motivated or, or even me motivated. If, if Holy Spirit shows you something in a meeting, release what he shows you there. And even in your seat, you're causing the meeting to go to a whole other dimension just by you being obedient to release what he shows you right there. You know, one time I was at a meeting, and he told me, and there's about 300 people, and I didn't know none of them. He says, I want you to run around this room. Well, I started jumping higher, and I jumped higher for a little bit. And he said, I didn't tell you to jump higher. I told you to jump, run around this room. And so I jumped a little higher for a little bit more often. But then finally, I just gave in and run around that room. And I can't tell you that nothing happened that I could see to change that meeting, except for he was training me to be obedient no matter what I look like. You know what I'm saying? So if you're in a meeting and it might look strange to you, well, don't worry about that. You know, uh, uh, a lot of a lot of churches now uh, they want to get they, they love the Father and the Son, but they want to keep Holy Spirit in the closet 
because we're afraid of how he might act. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's 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 let him do what he wants to do, and uh, it'll all turn out good. Okay, next slide, please. So, has uh, anybody got anything you want to say up to that point? We go good. Well, I'm just yes. hearing James. Just freedom in worship as you're just sharing that. Just freedom yes. in worship. It, uh, yes. That, that's what you're talking about. You know, we're holy. Not we're not just where we're free, but the Holy Spirit's free. <laughs> you know, to worship through us. <laughs> And he's free in his children, you know. Yes. But but it's but it's governmental, my friends. Now, so let's talk about this language thing for, for a moment. Language is the foundation of all culture, and so in that language, you release the identity of the culture, you release the beliefs of the culture, and the behavior of the culture. And if we look at our culture, we can see that that that, that those who have, have want, wanting the, the the same sex issue. They've, they've controlled the language, and so the identity of that culture and the beliefs and the behavior has been uh, invading us. Uh, but, uh, but I'm saying to you, the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. And so I'm saying this language that, that you're hearing there is a temporary. Let's move forward. Let's, uh, that's not my topic this afternoon. But, uh, but next slide, please. Yes. Now. Eternal power lies in the accuracy and the consistency of the language. And so in these whole explosions of holy knowing, as, you, as, as companies of people move in accurate and consistent releases, watch what happens in those communities, in those neighborhoods, in the earth. Let me tell you one, one bit of revelation that happened to me 10 years ago, and I still use it today. Yeah, really stay right there, Joseph. Years ago, we were intercessory meeting on a Saturday night, and the Lord said, I want you to call the kingpins in. I had never heard of that before, but we just did obedient. You know, we were just obedient. We called the kingpins in. Well, the next morning, a guy comes to the altar, and his CB handle is kingpin. But when he came, 17 of his family members came with him. And the next week, 23 more family members came with him. So in an explosion of holy knowing in the night, as we just was obedient to release what Father showed us, it caused a, a kingpin to come to the altar. And he's like, you know, they say in Africa, when a tribal chief comes in, whole tribes come in. So I'm saying to you, in the time that we're at now in awakening in the earth, kingpins are going to begin to come out of darkness. I'm going to, let me watch my language. Kingpins are coming out of darkness as we speak, causing communities to change. That's the difference of that's what awakening is that we've not seen up to this point. Next slide, please. Uh, so we bless everybody with this, a language aligned. Remember, we, we're going back to our very first couple slides. Uh, alignment with uh, positioned with and aligned with original intent. A language aligned with eternal purpose and original intent unlocks, opens, and secures the glory gates of nations. <laughs> This has been what the enemy has tried to diminish. Whenever Father created nations, he created each nation with the glory to release. And so the enemy has tried to diminish the glory of the nations, and we're going to talk about it probably more in a little bit, through dishonor. But now the sound of the sons honoring Father through his intent and his purpose is opening the glory gates of nations. And so... Uh, that is another, uh, you know, it's not just individual holy explosions. Uh, it, it's national. It's 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 tribal. It's bloodlines in every in every dimension. Next slide, please. Amen. Well, I'm going to call on Gary here, James, because Gary's called to bring transformation glory to the nations, and so many followers uh, on here are friends of Gary. So, Gary, <laughs> I'm telling you, James, what a message. I just see this piercing the darkness, that phrase. It's just piercing the darkness. What you're sharing is, I've been sharing for a while, the Lord's been saying the, the basically the church age is over and the kingdom age is here. And, and uh, the Lord's really, that's a resounding message right now, but I don't think I've ever heard it so clearly yeah. as today about the sound and unlocking, uh, unlocking, opening, securing the glory gates. If there was ever a time in the earth that this was a mandate for the plumb line and for the sound of the holy, we continue to hear uh, the about the sound of heaven, but I've never heard it put this way, and your images describe it so perfectly. But I'm telling you, I am just overwhelmed by Holy Spirit right now 
uh, with what you're saying, it's it's just absolutely uh, just uh, impacting every part of me right now. So praise God. This is and I know it's going out. This is being released to actually transform our words, our thoughts, going right into the holy place. Holy, holy, holy. I believe this is going to transform our whole uh, attitude, our whole heart attitude coming before him, living our lives every day, affecting everything. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Lynn, let's, let's hear from you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really quite overwhelmed and consistency, that was such a word and even the way that you changed your language mid-sentence and you reminded yourself that it's here, it's now, it's not something that's coming, it's something that's here and, and that really is what we have to do, we have to change our language and, and you made it so simple, say what you see, sing what you see. That's not hard, is it? You know, we can all do that. So, thank you. This is just amazing. Thank you. Man. And Pam? Yes, just what Lynn said um, about the here and now. It's the here and now. We're, we're experiencing it now. And, um, what you know, what you said about going up must come down, you know, like on this earth. Um, his glory is coming on this earth. And it's just, um, yeah, the images are just, they're speaking. Volumes. Amen. Amen. Simone, let's get your feedback. Uh, it's this is colorful and amazing, and um, <laughs> and I am, and I my spirit is leaping, and I'm 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 glad like uh, James said that we when he's saying that we are now in the kingdom and that God is, is a, I, and I agree with him, I feel like there's a continuous invitation to come up and to, and I think that's a manifestation of the sons of God, that God is um, calling us all to now. And I think that, that this course, this online course is even an expression of that. So um, I'm just grateful to God because I feel the call even more again through James and today. And um, it's been coming through Gary these last couple of courses. So it's getting stronger and stronger. And, um, and I think we're just seeing the manifestation of the sons of God. So it's, it's just really a powerful thing. I'm going to encourage Steve Schultz to invite you back too for soaring three three three, James. You know because uh, this is so powerful. You know God's been building, you know, momentum with the soaring two two two. Anyway, it's just so so powerful. Whew. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> I've been waiting to get to this one, uh, but I'm I'm thinking that was a, it was a perfect pause, so that this here, this slide here can. Uh, speak to us. I'll start by reading the scripture at the bottom that Simone just expressed. For even the whole creation, all nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's Son to be made known, waits for the revealing and the disclosing of their sonship. And see, here's what we, we see CNN and we see Fox and all, I don't know what difference the nation, the, the station, but we, it all paints a picture of where we've been and what the earth has been. But here's what the earth has not seen or not known. And the, the earth has never experienced the sound of an army of mature sons aligned with heaven as one in releasing the power and the order of eternal decree. Wow. So I don't care where we've been or how long we've been there. The earth has never experienced the sound of the army of mature sons aligned with heaven as one in releasing the power and the order of eternal decree. That's what Romans 8.19 is talking about. It's been talking about the hour that's not coming. It's talking about the hour that we're in now. And so we are here, and it's going to do nothing but get deeper and broader. The kingdom age is here. And so uh, uh, this is the sound of it, and this is what it looks like. It is lightning, the lightning of heaven uh, filling people, the, the sons of God, and, and being released in the earth. Amen. That's your mandate, James. That's your mandate, and God's going to use these global broadcasts. You're experiencing this now with the video. That's your mandate. That's what he's calling you to do in this now season. Yes. You know, he. that's yes. your calling. That's your calling. 
So I'm just going to share what I'm hearing. Amen. <laughs> Bless me. Holy, Thank holy, you. holy. I, I, re I receive another dimension of that, Father, uh, today, whatever that is. Amen. Amen. Next slide. We're going to change. Oh, well, here we are, explosions of holy knowing. So hopefully, not hopefully, I know. I'm, I'm confident there's been explosions of holy knowing already. Mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that's part of our, our assignment, too. Let's get out of uh, this uh, false humility. Yeah, it's happening with people. Uh, but let, let's change. Let's go to the next. This is what I want to now. Remember, we talked about position and alignment uh, with original intent. Well, now let's talk about uh, the, the alignment part of it in a whole other way. Again, Jim Chosa, like I said, he taught us years ago. He said, James, every time you go into a prayer meeting, stop and through the blood of the Son, link that meeting to every other blood bought intercession that has ever been. That way, you've just set your, your meeting on top of a tsunami of intercession. And so if you're on a Tuesday morning or two or three people, there's not just two or three of you in the room. You've set, you've set in honor your, your, your meeting with all the, the, the faith that the cloud of witnesses had, with all the promises that they carried because you've come through the blood and set your in, in alignment with that. You've linked with the cloud of witnesses. You know? And so this is a picture of a woman by the name of Ada Wynn. She was a man that his name was Nigel Big Pond. He's a uh, tremendous man of God in the earth. And she was his chief intercessor. Now, when I met her, her hair wasn't this color. It was more salt and pepper as she was older. But the day after she passed and was glorified, I, I created this image and it's Father presenting herself, presenting her in the eternals among the cloud of witnesses represented by these horses here. But now she's in the eternals. There's nothing bagging, nothing sagging. She looking good all of her days and so but what she's doing here is she's looking back on her time in the earth looking at rivers of living water out of your belly shall flow what rivers of what living water so even after you draw your last breath your intercession is eternal and it's living what father said he says James there will come a time when you'll meet the intercessions that you released here on the earth because you, they're alive it's forevermore so next slide, please. Now, here's, here's a scripture in Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, it, it talks, uh, the next, it, it says, uh, actually, Hebrews 11.40. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about what Bob Jones carried, what uh, John Paul Jackson carried, what Abraham Lincoln carried, what, what Gwen Shaw carried, uh, uh, what uh, David Wilkerson carried, and Steve Hill, and John Adams, and, 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 and uh, uh, what, 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 the peanut man, uh, John Carver. Uh, uh, Washington Carver. Washington Carver, yeah. Uh, and all, uh, Martin Luther King, all of them. Their intercessions are alive. What they saw beyond their years are alive. And we are linking in this kingdom age. You need to know these things are coming into alignment. That's what makes this age different. That's a, and we'll talk more about it in a little bit. There's a couple more slides I want to show you. But we need to know something. We in alignment and in honor is releasing. That, this is what the synergy of intercessions is about. It's about those who are on the Mayflower all the way over to the four left, signing the Magna Carta. Those who gave their lives on Omaha and Iwo Jima Beach. George Washington's prayers for this nation, Abraham Lincoln, and what Dutch sheets his his mandate is releasing the synergy of intercessions of the ages. So I'm saying to you, in this whirlwind year that we're in, that's why things are happening now. A lot of people say, well, well all hell's breaking loose. You know why? Because all heaven's breaking in. That's what happens whenever things get, whenever it looks like hell's breaking out everywhere. It's because heaven's breaking in. And but usually when all hell breaks loose, we stop. No, no, no. Don't stop then. Go ahead and trample it to dust. Nice. All right. So uh, this afternoon, we thank you. This is another moment that we have to release that whirlwind of eternal intercession. So through the blood of the Son, we honor all the cloud of witnesses. We honor all that they carried. We honored what they said would be coming. It is. We say it's not going to be coming now. It is here. And so God will be blessed that that billion soul revival that, that Bob Jones saw. We thank you for that. We thank you for what uh, Steve Hill carried. Uh, we, we thank you for the evangelist being loosed. We thank you, Father, for, for what John Adams and George Washington and Abraham Lincoln saw for a nation. Give us not babes and children as leaders. Give us mature sons as leaders. Amen. Through the Amen. blood of this. Amen. I've got to call on Glenessa. <laughs> thank you.
fucking Jesus. Uh, wow. Oh. <laughs> wow, God. Whoa. <laughs> this is just awesome. A couple days ago on one of the calls, I saw just a field of eagles. And all these eagles, they were on the field, but I saw this, this wind came in and picked up these eagles, and they just began to just soar. And as you were speaking, I just wrote, I, there is an army of mature sons of God rising, and they're coming up, and they're coming up. And right after that, you show that slide. There is an army of sons, mature sons of God. They're coming out from every nation. Yes. Every nation, every tribe, every tongue, every people group. The First Nations people all over the earth. There is a movement and there is a sound that is going forth. And as you, you, you're sharing, I, I, I was just hearing that what you're doing, you're presenting to us in this new kingdom era that we are in, this kingdom age, a pattern, a blueprint that has always been there. And so many voices have spoken of these things. But you are making it fresh today. Here is the blueprint, and God is saying, take a look. Take a look. Be refreshed. Take a look. This is the blueprint. Get in on it. Get in on it. Get in on it. Amen. Amen. Carlene, I'm going to hear from you. Yes. Well, thank you, Joseph. Um, it's it's very hard to talk. <laughs> Father, we just I just Father, we just thank you, Lord. We just thank you for what you're doing right now. More is being done. More is being done than is even captured right now. That is even being realized. Uh, it is. I see you just ribbons of colors and rivers and rivers and rivers, and it actually started um, while everyone was talking before the meeting started, uh, and it is penetrating the minds and the hearts. I see it piercing everyone that is on the call today. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. This message. Um, it needs to be it needs to be broadcasted all over the nations as it is and yes James there needs to be more uh, you you definitely need to do <laughs> more um, this uh, it, it really appeals to my heart because we do Davidic worship at uh, glory fire which is the church that I attend and the pastors have really uh, sacrifice so much to make that happen and we recently got a word about what that is doing in the in the city a pastor on the other side um, of the city could, literally gave them a word to say you're having more of an impact than you realize things are happening in other ministries and to reach the people in this city because of what you're doing and it has to do with the prophetic worship the prophetic worship where we're just dance and sing and proclaim and intercede uh, it, it, um, before the king. We receive and we intercede. And so, so much comes from heaven. So much comes from heaven for us to, to do. And uh, so much he pours so much out uh, during those times. So this is just uh, my heart is rejoicing as I hear you. I'm going to make sure my pastors definitely hear this message because it will confirm so much to them of what they're doing. Um, and I just thank you so very much. Just thank you so very much uh, for, for what you're doing today. By the way, Carlene, uh, Brian Francis Hume just shared a dream. He had two dreams with Gary and myself. You saw that, and one of his dreams had to do with Walt Disney in Orlando, Florida, where Walt Disney's house was the only light lit place. All the rest of Disney World was dark. And, you know, so Dalt, Walt Disney represented what was good and what was great about television and TV. But when I when I saw that dream and heard it, I thought about you and being in Orlando, Florida, and then how your pastors and your church 
you know, have this apostolic resource center. So I just wanted to share that. Okay, well, James, let's have you, let you move on here and talk about the angels. Well, um, I did a, I, I put them at the end of this, uh, uh, you know, of, of this presentation. Uh, last October to November, I did a, a thirteen, uh, I, and I don't, I don't want to go to them. I just let you know that uh, something happened to me peculiar that never happened before. I did, I think, a series of fifteen angels uh, in a month. And the Lord said, it's because there's angelic movement in the earth that the earth has never seen before. Uh, and so what we want to get used to in our gatherings is, is, is moving with the angels and, and, and welcoming them as sons to, to do what they've come to do. So a lot of times in our meetings these days, we, and here's what David Herzog says. He says, if you're bored with your Christian life, you need to connect to the glory and work with the angels. <laughs> and so, and, and so I, I totally that that is another part of the pattern uh, that the earth has not seen is the angelic uh, movement in cities like uh, we're we're seeing now, and we'll see. So, so Father, we thank you of the angels even on this, and everybody who sees us, we welcome the angels, uh, angelic forces to do what they need to do with, with us and with the sound. This is one of the images I created about the angelic movement. Uh, uh, my, uh, one, another spiritual father of mine was a man named Roland Smith. Uh, he had a stroke in 1997, and I came to serve that ministry. And, uh, but he wrote a book. Uh, he was with a, a guy named Shel Schoberg's house over in Sweden. And he was praying, and all of a sudden there were four beings in the room. And so he asked them uh, to try the spirits. He asked them, are, are, is Jesus Lord? And they, the response was, yes, he's Lord, and we're angels that have served with Joshua and with Gideon. And we've conquered more land than we care to talk about, but there, there will come a day when the sons will keep what we've conquered. And, 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 there was, and so there was a time when, whenever we, we've not, as a people, known how to keep uh, the advancements of the kingdom. But I'm saying to you now, the angels are moving and we're moving with them. And so that's what this is about. Next slide, please, I guess. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show you this because this is what's happening in explosions of holy knowing. At the bottom, you see uh, the earth, and it says the eternal memory of Father's footsteps. The earth still remembers. That whole Roman 8.19 is calling out for the sons to arise and walk on the earth knowing who they are. And now in that second plane is, is all these structures that have been built over uh, by the enemy trying to diminish uh, the, the glory that's really there and so that they, he can control the earth. That, that was his, his an insanity. He thought he could do that. But the eternal word, what's happening as you, the, the eternal word is what is exploding within you. It's eternal purpose and original intent. So what it's doing, it's opening portals between heaven and earth and glory is coming and manifesting and causing regions to light up with original intent and the purpose that fathers had from the foundation. That's just a quick thing I've tried to do to, because sometimes if you can put spiritual principles in the image. And so this is a, a gathering we've done now for the last couple of years called Tribe Quantum. Because believe me, we as a people don't understand quantum physics or the mechanics and how it connects to us in the spirit. So we're endeavoring to do that. Uh, and so we have these worshipers that come. And so for a week, we, we just get together and, and, and we, we just, it's, it's a wild time. So this is, was last year. But I, the reason I put this is because I want to show you, give you an example next of, of so at this gathering last year, uh, go ahead to the next slide, Joseph, if you will. Uh, on Friday afternoon, uh, Ray Hughes, he's, always, he's been our, one of our speakers because he, he knows more about sound than anybody that I know of. There may be others, but I just don't know them. But, but Ray's a, a father and a mentor in sound. And so he, he talks about how the drums break open the earth and, and, and shofars pierce the heavens. So in, last year I was teaching on a Friday afternoon session, and I wanted to just experiment with the sound of drums and shofars. So we started doing that for, uh, it seemed like it was five, five minutes or more, but all of a sudden, uh, Father had a surprise for us. We moved into singing about resurrection power and signs, wonders, and miracles. It, it, it turned into this 55-minute movement of holy explosions of, 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 of releasing. So you need to know that right now in this kingdom age, resurrection power is what is manifesting. Signs. 
signs, wonders, and miracles are what is manifesting like we've never seen. And so during that movement, we, we sang, clean the warehouse out. We sang oh, new eyes, new arms, new legs, new heart, new lungs. We, we sang cancer-free zones. We sang diabetes must go. We sang suicide must go. We sang angels are moving, stirring uh, in the waters. We sang kingdom sinners. We released the substance of the kingdom. And so that kind of sound is what happens in, in holy explosions of moments where he surprises you. So it's not just voices, but it's the instruments that you release. Those instruments sometimes it's not voices that are needed. It's the, it's the, the timber uh, of, of the trumpet or it's the sound of the guitar or the drum. So I'm going to say to you, let's not limit ourselves. Uh, we, we, uh, sing what you see, yes. Paint what you see. Play what you see. Is that making sense to you? Yeah. But, but let it be a holy explosion in whatever you are uh, 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 expressing yourself through. Next slide. Amen. Please. Amen. Let's, Gary, let's get your feedback. I agree. This is so revelatory, uh, James, right now. This is so extraordinary uh, what you're sharing. It's explosive. It is. It's life-changing. I believe uh, what the Father's given you is a gift to express the eternal in uh, every one of these uh, uh, graphic images uh, helps to open up our eye gates. It helps to open up our ability to see into the eternal what's totally what we're in, what's around us. I absolutely believe as I watch every one of these images and as you articulate what you're saying, what happens in these meetings, that it's all connecting and resonating within me, within every one of us. So, uh, my goodness, it's life-changing. This is life-changing today. Um, I, I feel like what you're saying corporately, when we come corporately with the timber, with the sound, with different instruments, with our declarations, it's activating life. It's activating the eternal uh, in ways we have not understood before. And that and it's unlocking all that and we're interacting with it finally we're able to begin to be the full manifest mature sons of God and interact on a level we've never understood before I mean this is a day I believe the Lord's waited for for a long time but that we can in, uh, incorporate this in our personal intercessory time that we can have these holy explosions is that right we yes. can have these holy explosions personally every day in our intercession, is that right? Exactly. And then when we come together corporately, because you had them every day, it just it just blows up. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and the glory is glory, really. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look, uh, look at this Joseph, logo. We'll go back to this. Yeah, this logo for Qu Tribe Quantum, just incredible, incredible. You know, James does logos. You know, if you've got a business that you think is called to change the world, I encourage you. If you don't have a great logo, contact James. We encourage you to get his artwork. You know, I'll, I'll include a link in on the follow-up email where you can find his website. You know, this, but even the colors here. Look at the colors of the people. Even the lighting on that whole thing. Just that is a manifestation of the glory of God. Just the way it's lit up. Because it could be a photograph, and everyone's about the same lighting. It's incredible. I mean, just the color matching there too, James. So, which which one do you want me to go back to? The the, the next one. Uh, about right. the angel and because uh, this is where I think it depicts really clearly where we've been. See, this ground has been like this, this, this satanic crust almost, trying to keep. Satan knew he had he, he had to contain this as long as he could. But what's happening now is the worship of the sons has pierced this the, the satanic crust, and the angels now these portals are opening everywhere. Uh, again, it's, it's like a cracking, the, the whole earthquake thing, uh, it, it, it's, 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 it's a sign of what's happening in the spiritual realm in the heavens. There's, there's a cracking of, of, of the heavens that's open and there's a move from the vibrations of our worship. Amen. Amen. So, okay. Uh, the, and, and that CD is available, that 55 minutes. Believe me, it's, it's, it's powerful. Now, remember we, we talked about uh, holy knowing through art and sound. Uh, this is an image that when I heard uh, uh, about a meeting that was out in California with Dutch Sheets and Chuck Pierce about Acts 5.15, uh, I, I created this awakening train. Uh, uh, and even as I'm 
even I said just said there's just a train just went by and it's, it's, it's roaring in my background. Uh, so uh, I, I love it when Father does that. You can't orchestrate that kind of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> but 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 what I wanted to show you is 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 this word unlocks something uh, in, in the prophetic dimension that this, your images do. So let's go to the next slide. And here's what Chuck Pierce said uh, about this image. He said uh, the first prophetic word that Chuck Pierce ever, the, the Lord ever spoke to me was, this is what Chuck is saying, the first prophetic word he ever spoke to me was, there's a train coming down from heaven that will be awakening, bring awakening, and this train cannot be stopped. I had it, I had that word in a notebook since 1976. And he said, that's what, he said, whenever he got that word, he preached it, he talked about it, but then after a time, he just kind of let it go. Next slide, please. But he said, uh, uh, in this next slide, he says this, uh, when, when I saw that image, I didn't see that word until you drew that word. And all of a sudden, I heard God say, what has been postponed is now. Wow. So prophetic earnest, I want to say to you, when Father gives you an image, uh, it's not just about you. It's about what he is wanting to release in the earth. So I bless you all. Don't worry. Well, I don't understand that image. You don't have to. Uh, that's how come abstract art. Uh, let, let him do with the colors what he wants to do with. So, But we thank you for all the prophetic images that are unlocking things in other people. So the awakening train is here. It's filled with fire, and it's moving through the earth. So that, that's just a prophetic image that is speaking. That image has a voice to it. Just the way that uh, songs have create pictures, uh, images have a voice to them. So next slide, please. But I just want to give you that example for the artist. Now, whenever I, whenever, uh, I, I invited Chuck to our gathering last year, and you know, he's a busy man, and I only want him where God wants him. Uh, even if I want to have a meeting, but he said, when you when you release that image about the awakening train, I if that's what you guys are going to be talking about, I'm going to come to that meeting. So, as, as we were worshiping that night, remember, in worship, people see things. And so what Chuck saw, this is what he said that night. He said, the Lord, as, he said, as we were worshiping, the, this was in St. Louis last, last June, right across the river from St. Louis. And the Lord said, this was the place in America where he would divide soul and spirit where all of a sudden a new spiritual awakening would arise, and in that spiritual awakening there would be sounds of harvest that have never been released in and through the portal into America from heaven. And the sounds would begin to divide asunder the wheat and the tares. Next slide, please. Now you need to know this was 51 days before the Michael Brown incident in St. Louis. The Lord said, I am going to divide the nation from this point. Then he said this, I am realigning the sound of heaven, and I'm going to cause a dividing line to come down and start dividing in this nation the wheat and the tares. I'll do it in states, I'll do it in the counties, I'll do it in cities, and I'm going to cause my Judah people to arise. All right? Next slide, please. This is what's happening right now. Judah is rising in the earth. Now, have you heard the scripture about, oh, Lord, they've sown the wheat and the tares together. What should we do? And he said, well, you just let them grow for now, and you let them come to the fullness of time, and then I am going to what? Send the angels to come in harvest time. So I'm saying to you, whenever he gave that word that there's a sound coming that's going to begin to divide the wheat from the tares, that is a sobering word, my friends. Yeah. It also lets you know that the angels are coming now, and they're dividing wheat from tares in this land. But it's through the sound of Judah rising that this is moving. Is that making sense to us? Amen. Lynn, let's hear from you. <laughs> I'm almost speechless. I just want to hear James speak some more because we are having a feast. There's, we need this. We need to hear this repeated again and again and again because it's so new. We need to get hold of it. We, need, we really need to take hold of it and own it sound alignment we need to be singing the same song we need to be saying the same things and you're absolutely right it's now now yes. now now yes he is in our chest now so let's just go right here ray hughes says i created this out of a statement ray hughes said he says when you dance you're actually sculpting the air wow, wow. <laughs> now that's powerful my friends yes 
So what's happening in the air, the molecules, you're shifting molecules. You're shifting things in the atmosphere. Just like we got cell phones that we don't realize that they're picking up frequencies and stuff that the room's filled with. But these dancers that are dancing unto the Lord, they are, act and see, a lot of places are trying to shut the dance down. No, 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 you don't want to do that. They open up a dimension that they can only open from, from their, their, their hearts. Now, we got a lady coming to our gathering in a couple of weeks. Her name is Ruthie Young, and she talks about, she got it from some guy in England who came. You may know him, Lynn, but he talks about using your whole body as intercession. And, 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 and what you see in your body, just creating that and moving in it. I tell you, it looks like abstract art, and if you're probably, we look real weird when we're doing it, but I'm telling you, man, it, it, it just unlocks something. I, I couldn't wait to have her back because I couldn't catch all she was saying last year. So I said, man, come back and teach us more about that that stuff. But anyway, sculpt in the air. For you dancers out there, you go on and, 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 and dance what you see. Okay. Well, this this uh, Psalm 139, 16, and, and I love Robert Henderson as well. And, and he talks about, and not just him, uh, Paul Keith talks about, others talk about, about books of destiny uh, for people, for families, for cities, for nations. And so this image here, uh, I love Psalm 139. It says, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Now, I, I love talking about, you know, all the days ordained for me were written in the book. But see, most of you don't know my story. When I was a young man, I always my art is art is a gift for me, uh, and and I always want to be a guy like Norman Rockwell. But when I went to college, my very first class, I took I made two major mistakes. I took Bible as literature, and I and, and uh, they destroyed everything. I thought I, I didn't know much, but I thought they destroyed what I thought I knew. And then I had a, a, a my first professor was a very twisted guy. And they made fun of me. And so by the end of that first semester, my art was totally twisted backwards. And I would even sign it, Tibbs and Smodge, which is James Nesbitt, backwards. So I was saying, uh, and I'll talk about it more in a minute, the enemy, if he can't steal your gift, he'll love to twist it so it, it's used for a reverse purpose. So all the days are ordained for me written in a book. But what the blood does is it just washes out all those days that weren't ordained. It says, I didn't write that. It never was a part of your book, so let's just put the blood on it. And so all I can see is what I wrote for you. Uh, I just love the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> you know, he's good to me. <laughs> so, next slide, please. So I'm changing again on us here probably in, in, in subject matter, but let's go ahead and talk about it because uh, this is just well, – we're going to talk about books of destiny now. Next, Could you change that image, Joseph? Is it coming there? Bless your father. Bless your father for. So this is one of my favorite passages of scripture. Is Acts seventeen twenty six, from one blood, I have made all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth, and predetermine their times and set the mounds of their habitations. So that means all of us, we've all got bloodlines that go all the way back to the garden. And and so we're, we're, we and so when Father created our bloodline, he had a dream. For that bloodline, he had a purpose for it, and he had a, an intent for it. And, and so, when you look at your cities, just the way you have the streets, the city's made of bloodlines. Each city's made of bloodlines, and those those particular bloodlines have been gathered in that city to release something of purpose, of glory for that city. So, the next slide, please, if you will. Now, this is a picture. I, I believe what's going to come up next uh, is this is a picture of my DNA. I, I had a DNA test done, uh, and so uh, I, mostly my, 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 my family came from, uh, looked like Northern Europe, all into Scottish and Ireland, have some African sub-Saharan in me, and I have just a smidgen of, of a Native American in me, very little. Uh, I thought I had more than that. But anyway, but this is, this is a picture of what I look like in my DNA uh, sound that I release. So each one of your bloodlines, you've got a different color and different sounds that, that from the beginning you were created to release. So... Uh, I just saw something in this I never did see before, so now I'll talk about that a little bit later. So just the way you have bloodlines in our cities, we have family trees that build businesses, they build ministries, they build, they build our cities. 
And so each one of these trees, like the, the Joseph Peck tree, it, it might be an apple tree. Uh, the Gary Beaton tree might be a peach tree. Uh, uh, others of us have it were different, but our families have different fruits and different fragrances that Father has intended for us to release in the earth that would be a glory to Him. So mm -hmm. our intercession these days has turned to calling every family tree, every bloodline to original intent. Wow. Whatever Father's dream is for every bloodline, it's now for you to awaken. Now see, He's the Father of light, so if we can see in the Spirit, we're really, uh, our trees are made to be trees of glory. So that, that, so that everywhere we go, we light up the darkness by the glory of our tree shining. Uh, but the enemy is always trying to diminish the brightness of our tree. And so, uh, but this is what our family trees look like. Uh, so next slide, please. And so this scripture here, John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal the glory of your family tree or your bloodline. If not, he'll try to kill it. That's what the whole homosexual thing is about. Is the enemy is trying to steal the bloodlines, uh, the, the, the the fruit of, of of the people, and are willingly giving it in, in, in that, that that they're they're agreeing with it, uh, and to destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And like I said, if he can't kill your tree, he sure loves to take and twist it. So you're powering up his kingdom. And not the kingdom you're made to glorify. Next slide, please. Uh, you guys probably all know this, but it's just. So what he wants to do is he wants to hit your family so hard with trauma that, that, that he, he, all you see is darkness. He wants you not see, here, here's the deal. He doesn't want us living in the now. He wants us to either live in the past by pain of something we've suffered or by worry in the future, uh, but not living in the now. And so, in, 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 see, I was, I was a, a rock and roll drummer after I got so twisted, and, and somebody put my name in a teacup, and they call me out of darkness in the light. And so what happens, next slide please, whenever you get or in darkness, your only way out is for somebody to call you out of darkness in the light. And so what we're doing right now, what the sons of God are doing, see how this light is shining so bright? Even though these bulbs are dark, the reflection of the light is shining them, causing them to awaken to, to, to what they were really intended for. Uh, the enemy has stolen their light, and they're powering his kingdom up with their light. You remember I said I signed my name, Tibbs and Smodge, which is James Nesbitt backwards? Well, what do you think the name of Oprah Winfrey Studio was called? Harpo. Oprah Winfrey backwards. Are you saying what I'm saying? So her gift, the enemy has captured her gift. Instead of saying there is one God, and I know him and know who he is, she's been proclaiming that there are many gods. But today, we thank you, Father. We bless Oprah Winfrey's original intent. We bless her. She's like the rest of us. Let her see how jealous her God is for her in a holy way. And we bless Oprah. We, we bless you with awakening light today, Oprah. And every other gift that's twisted on that entertainment mountain or on every other mountain, we bless you with light, blood-bought light to come out of darkness and to see what you were really created for. So we bless these mountains, all seven of them with light today. Every bloodline, every family tree. Amen? Amen. 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 Next slide, please. So, we all fall down, but it's how we get up that counts. I heard Jim Gall put out something a week or two ago. It says, if you fall down seven times, get up eight. <laughs> so today, Father, from this broadcast, we, leave, we, we, we release the get up eight sound. <laughs> and we thank you that no matter how many times people have fallen down, today we're releasing the get up eight sound. Yes. Amen? And we're saying it don't make no difference how you fall down. Get your mind off of that. We bless you to get on up because little generals are watching you. Little guys are watching how you're getting up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah, beautiful. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. Beautiful, James. Vanessa. <sighs> <laughs> wow, I am. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus, this is God of mercy. <laughs> oh, I have, I'm just exploding with all kinds of heavenly sounds and uh, 
expressions that are just just a stirring inside of my spirit. You know, James, one thing that I, I just want to thank you so much for what you're sharing because you're just stirring our hearts. And I, I just looked at the train and I saw another train and this train is called Freedom Train. But I saw this train moving through different cities and different nations and I see people getting on the train. And there's just such a movement of the train picking up the people. So I believe this is what is happening. People are getting on the train. There is freedom. There is freedom. Freedom has come on this call. Freedom has, has come to the nations. Freedom has come to the communities. Freedom has come to villages, states, whole nations are coming into this freedom. And this train is moving fast through all of these different regions and as it is moving people are running and they're coming and they're, you can see all the colors. I can see the colors of the nations. I can see the colors of the garments that the people are wearing but they are running because there's something that's moving through the community, something that's moving through their region, something that's moving through their city and the nation, something that's moving through their tribes, something that's moving through and they can hear the sound and people are coming from everywhere and I can see their colors, different colors colors representing different nations. People are wearing saris and beautiful colors. People are wearing African wear. They're just coming as they are, but they're getting on this train. There's just something that is moving, and I'm just seeing this happening right now. I just, just want to bless you for being so obedient to bring about this message for such a time as this. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, Thank you. I'm grateful to be here with you all today. Thank you, Joseph, for making way for, for these images. Uh, James, can you, I asked you before we began today if, if we could have permission to share this PowerPoint with our audience. And can you share what you shared about that and even going to places, what, what your policy is? Well, I, I said, y yes, uh, of course. Uh, you know, I love Mike Bickle. He, he says the copyright is copy it and use it, you know, say it on, on, on his stuff. And, uh, so uh, these images, this is our assignment is to release light into the earth, you know. And so everywhere I go, if I if I teach the PowerPoint, I leave them there because if they want to use that to, you know, to go back to a point or, or accentuate it or expand upon it, I want them to have as, as many tools as they can to do that. And so these PowerPoint images, yes, of of course they can they can use them to uh, to help, you know, broadcast light really, amplify light. Amen. Well, what we're going to do, too, I'm just hearing this clearly, we will make this video, the audio, available to people on this call. Uh, you can let your family and friends know about this. You know, you can refer them. So, we, you know, James has a policy of sharing, and we're going to share this message. It's so powerful. We want people to get on the freedom train. Amen. Go ahead, James. Well, uh, this this image here, I, I've been in so many meetings where I've, I've had people say, I, I just see the Lord dancing over us, you know. And so I created this image uh, trying to do my best. See, because I am a digital artist, uh, I have to use photographs. And so this guy started out as a rapper dancing, uh, but I <laughs> he, had a, he had a hoodie on and all kind of different stuff. But uh, So uh, I turned him into Jesus. Uh, but but th that's just the background of the image I was created. But if you notice, this is – you can't really see it, but there are all kind of people in the background there, and this is harvest. So I want you to know that the Lord himself is dancing over the harvest. Somebody said earlier how he, and I think it was Gary, how he has waited for this time. I'm saying to you, oh, yeah, he's waited for it, and he's dancing over the harvest, and he's dancing over the harvest of bloodlines and family trees. The king is in the field. And, 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 and it is harvest time, and, and it's a joyous dance. Of, of, of He has longed for this day. Uh, that's, what he's, that's what he hung on the tree for. Amen. So, so sound unlocks sight is what we've been saying. And this is another one of my favorite passages, Isaiah 9, 2. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light, and they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, uh, upon them a light has shined. As I shared earlier, that's my own story of being a rock and roll drummer, that these people needed a drummer for their church, so they called me out of darkness and, and the light. And three years later, I became the associate pastor of those people. So what I'm saying to you is, 
that, that, that sound in a meeting unlocks light for us to see what heaven wants to release. And so as we're just obedient to do that, you're unlocking whole communities. Uh, uh, there's no telling uh, what you're unlocking. Uh, and, and just be obedient to do what he shows you to do. Mm. Next slide, please. I guess let's just a comment on this one. Uh, and honor unlocks glory. Yes. Uh, see, whenever Adam was walking in the garden, he it says that he was clothed with fire uh, above and below. He was clothed with glory. But whenever he gave more worth to Satan's words than his father's, then the glory departed. And so uh, what Jesus did to humbling himself to the beast of the cross, he returned, Father, I've glorified you, your name here. Now return the glory to the sons. So what, what's been happening, and I'll probably talk more about this in a minute if we get to it, uh, about uh, in our nation, this honor has, unlocked, has locked up the glory of the land. Uh, but, uh, so now I'm going to tell you about a journey that I've been on in, in, uh, in 2010, I was in a meeting in Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, with leaders from HAPN, and John Hamill was standing beside me. And uh, I was just minding my own business, and the Lord said, this city needs a siege laid to it. He said that in my heart. And then John, I opened my eyes, and he said, hey, you know, this city needs a siege laid to it. Now, I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, but I thought <laughs> the Lord might be, be, be saying something. And, and sure enough, he was. He, he gave me an assignment to go to Washington, D.C. for 40 days to worship him. Uh, and then because Philadelphia was the f first capital, I was supposed to go after Washington, D.C., spend 11 days in, uh, in Philadelphia. But nobody in D.C. knew who I was. I didn't have a name that they were welcoming, uh, so nobody opened the doors for me to come to D.C. for 40 days. But I want to show you. Go to the next slide, please. But I'll show you what holy explosions and eternal light does. Uh, uh, well, I'll, I'll look at this one first, and then we'll go. Can, Joseph, can you go to one more and come back to this one? Uh, we'll we'll go go do that. Let's go. Let's push one more. Now I'll, I'll come back to that one. Uh, take a uh, yeah. So nobody, like I said, invited me to come. But there was this little lady, uh, if you can see right in the middle, there's this thing called the gate post. Uh, she, she, she has an inner, ci inner city meeting where she gathers inner city kids uh, to come every Friday night, and they pray all night long for the Lord to come to Washington, D.C. But they, they live in Anacostia, which is the ghetto. Uh, and so whenever she heard me, she said, Sir, I believe that, that, that you're an answer to our prayer, and if you would come to our house of prayer, we'd love to have you for 40 days. But we're in the ghetto. And so we did that. But what I didn't know was, if you look over here in 2003, Cindy Jacobs, Nija Big Pond, and, and, and John Benefield and Jay Swallow, they had come to that very spot on a prayer assignment eight years before. And so what I was moving in that I didn't know of uh, was uh, Joseph pushed another button. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Let's see what happens here. If it goes back, we'll have to come. Yeah, this is what. So this is eight years earlier than I go to the gate post, and, and, and I lived there for 40 days. We, we slept upstairs and worshiped downstairs. And we ended on 11, 11, 11. I really almost think that this new kingdom age, that 11, 11, 11 was the reset. I'm not exactly positive on that, but I, I would almost tend to think that that was, was an accurate statement, that 11, 11, 11 was a reset of kingdom age beginning. So anyway, a guy named Jason Hershey, he came and worshiped with us for 40 days in, 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 in the house of prayer. And, and, and I said, Jason, I believe that you're supposed to make this gate post a, a house of prayer uh, for Washington, D.C. And he heard me, and, and, and they prayed about it, and, and it, it did that. Then Rick Writings come in January of, of that year, and he said, uh, listen to what Rick said. He said, the last decade, the focus has been on harp and bowl intercession, but now the next 10 years, the emphasis will be on crown and throne intercession, which is, is governmental intercession. Crown and throne is what I've been describing on this whole, um, uh, you know, with these images. It's just a different way to look at it. So, so then out of that, the Ten of David, worship in Washington, D.C., happened. But now I need you to go back to the, to the slide before this, if you will, because I want to show you something about this Ten of David. Now, Washington, D.C. is called Columbia. It's called the District of Columbia, the city of the goddess, not the city of Christ, although we've changed the name of it to Washington, the District of Christ. But, but 
the people there have called it the District of Columbia. Why? Because they want the people who come to govern there, they want them to come under the authority of that principality so that they're making decisions that we wonder why in the world would they make that kind of decision. It's because they're under the power of a goddess. What our assignment was to do was to break that power. And now it, you got the White House and you have the Washington Monument, right in the middle you got the ellipse. A lot of time the enemy hides things in plain sight. And so we, our first assignment was to walk around that ellipse uh, and, and, and we did all kind of prayer things I'm not going to share here. But what I'll say to you that was, Jason Hershey did not know that. He had no clue that the very first thing that we did uh, on an assignment was, was pray at that ellipse. But a year later, while, so I'm saying to you, light is released in that intercession. So a year later, while Jason's worshiping, he gets this brilliant thought that they're supposed to set up a tent of David there and worship for 40 days. I want to say to you, let's go back go forward now to that one slide. Next slide, please. Yes. I want to show you. Here you had apostles and prophets come in 2003. Then eight years later, the Father was going to do a new beginning, so he sends people to worship in that, in that little ghetto place that this lady, the lady, whenever they first came uh, to the gate post, this lady wasn't by herself. Her husband was with her. But after they came, her husband left her, and she, but she didn't leave the ministry. She kept on doing what she was called to do, and for, for those eight years, she kept gathering those little kids, little kids, mind you, crying out for the Lord to come. And then uh, we, 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 then we in, in response to their intercession, the Lord sent us. We stayed there 40 days and had people around the nation praying for Washington, D.C. Then after that, a house of prayers birth there. Then after that, the tent of David, which is still ongoing. I'm saying unto you, the Lord is building something. He's always had a mind to build it. And now he's building it deep and wide in Washington, D.C. Is that making any sense to you? So we bless of David, we bless all those who are called to intercession for Washington, D.C., and every capital. Father, we thank you today for synergy of intercessions, no matter what it's been like. And, and as we're praying for our nation, we're praying for Canada and the other nations as well. We thank you for holy explosions of holy knowing today. This actually, this, this broadcast is about a release of explosions of holy knowing. And so we, got, we thank you now for strategies bursting. We thank you for mature sons bursting in every capital through the blood of the Son. Amen. Thank you. Amen. 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 Holy, now, holy, holy. Holy. <laughs> holy. Well, you know, when we came here, the, 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 we, we, we came with all of our songs. But here's what the Lord said. He said, I don't want your songs, and I don't want a lot of words. You present yourself to me in holy, and I'll show you what I want you to sing out of that. So every team that came, they all came with their song. But the very first moment, I said, no, we're not doing that, folks. This is what we're doing. And to the man, they were ruined when they left from doing songs again. And they started moving into a whole other dimension of worship. Mm -hmm. That's what the Father did for us. And so five years ago, he, we began on this course that he's been maturing us in these last five years. And I'll be forever grateful. Yeah. Next, I don't know what time it is. But this is. But now, now I want to show you the fruit of the light. Five years later, January 30, 2015, Washington Post headline. Anacostia's burgeoning potential catches the attention of home buyers. All of a sudden, the city that was a ghetto and looked down upon, now its potential is everywhere. Light has visited the city, and people are seeing its value. That's what your intercession is doing. Go to the darkest places and release your light. That's where the enemy wants to. He, he's got the treasures covered up in the darkest places. Next slide, please. <laughs> So here I'm back to holy, the plumb line frequency of the universe. But I want to, you know, we, we sang that in Washington, D.C., but I'm about to show you something else about sound. So, but remember, holy is the plumb line frequency of the universe. Next slide, please. Now, a year later, in, in 2012, we were called to go to Chicago for 50 days between Passover and Pentecost. And something very strange happened to me the very first night. Uh, next slide, please. Now, when we were in Washington, yeah, now on our 50th day in Chicago, here's what Chuck Pierce, he didn't know we were even probably in the city. On the 50th day, Chuck Pierce came to Chicago and prophesied Chicago was entering 50 years of Jubilee. All right? Uh, that's what happens. Prophetic light in your prophetic position opens the way for the next prophetic release. Next slide, please. So let's don't get territorial about our stuff and honor what everybody does. Now, 
our very first night in Chicago, I had heard Holy I Thought sang. I mean, we sang it in Washington, D.C. It was always beautiful and sweet and wonderful. But the very first night in Washington, in, in, in Chicago, uh, this friend of mine named George Adamson, he's a keyboard player, and he had th this huge sound system, and he, and he had it all set up. And when I asked him to sing Holy, he hit this effect, and I was waiting to hear this sweet Holy. But it wasn't that. It was holy, 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 holy. And it just kept echoing like a thundering thing. So much so that all the hairs on my arms were sticking up when I heard it. It brought fear to my heart. So when I got home that night, I asked the Lord, what was that? He says, well, what do you think a creature with six wings and has eyes all within and without and the head of a lion sounds like when he says holy? It might not be what you're used to. But now let me tell you the rest of the story. Before that happened, there was this young worship team that, 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 that George's daughter had invited to worship with us, and they were, doing their, they were doing worship songs, but I knew I couldn't enter in where they were at because I was on assignment and I had to set the plow deep. So I said, little guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make room for you in a minute, but I've got to go here first. And that's when I asked George to sing holy. But when he sang that, those little kids ran out of the room thinking we were worshiping devils. And they went to a huge church down the street. So they went to that church telling them that we were worshiping devils. Uh, and it was a secret sensitive church. And so, but the next Sunday, the amazing thing happened. As they, as they related that story to that pastor, he got up next Sunday morning and he said, you know, all week long the Lord's been convicting me that I have not been letting Holy Spirit have his way here. And if you've not been letting him have his way in your home either, I'd like to invite you to the altar. And they said the altar was filled with people that Sunday morning. And the little kids said, what made us in that sound run away? So they came back and, and the relationship was rebuilt and restored. What I'll say to you, there are, now those, those people weren't in the room. So I'm saying to you, there are sounds invading cities now that caused the whole cities to shake. We were at another meeting in Kentucky last year, and on a Saturday night we were at a meeting, and, and it was a small meeting, and all the pastors of the city were invited, but none of them came except for maybe one or two. The next morning, as they started to worship, none of them could preach because their worship got interrupted by a, a, a breakout of the freedom train, and, and so uh, they, they couldn't preach because their worship teams, it just kept going and going, and they wanted it to. And so they started texting the pastor where we were at the, that night before. They said, we don't know what happened, but they, 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 none of them knew that the other was texting. This guy said, we couldn't worship today. Then they get a text from another guy. Seven guys in this city. The sound interrupted business as usual. So, Father, we thank you today that your sound is interrupting business as usual. We're thanking you, Father, that the, that the sound of the kingdom is invading people's structures that men have built, but yet we, we, we factored Holy Spirit's movement out. We thank you, Father, for invading structures the way only you can do it in mercy and love and goodness. Amen? Amen. 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 Is my time up? No. Um, listen, <laughs> we are in eternal time right now. You know, in God's clock, it isn't linear, it's a circle. And so all we've done is we've gone past the one side and we're going, <laughs> so Gary, let's get your feedback here. And then he's going to continue. James, uh, I'm just overwhelmed by the presence of the Lord right now. I love your heart and you, you have such a gift also. Um, to articulate the Father's heart, articulate what is now becoming tangible in the cities, what's shifting the natural. You're, you're able to articulate. You just took us from sharing the sound uh, of the holy and, and everything else you laid out, and then you brought it into uh, the tangible, the natural realm, and gave us references you know, of Washington and the timeline to show the effect, uh, even Anacostia, to show us that there is, uh, to, go, to give us tangible results, to say, yes, you're making a difference. This is breaking through. And I just want to thank you for that, because I believe that's what we're all looking for. That's what the Father's looking for, the sons to be revealed so that knowing their place, their mandate, their call, their, their actions that collectively as one body with the right sound in alignment, in unity, 
is actually breaking the strongholds, changing atmospheres, literally changing cities, changing governments, changing the seven spheres. And, and so you're bringing it full circle. This is precious. I, I just want to share one more thing with you, James, is that we've been, uh, as we've been sitting here sharing, I keep getting uh, almost holographic pictures uh, for you that I, I really feel the Lord that today, there's a marker day somehow in your life, and the Lord is uh, going to begin or is beginning now to take you. You've pulled back the veil for us. And I believe you're now going to enter new realms of heaven yourself you. and, and begin to express new things. Uh, there's new chapters, new books, new things that you're going to begin to see yourself and reveal yourself. Um, what you presented is royal, but he's going to begin to take you into much higher royal places with angels and everything else. So I, I, we all just bless you and love you, James. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. I received okay. that. Uh, <laughs> what I was hearing in my spirit is we are experiencing a glory invasion. It's, it's a glory invasion right now. And another thing I just uh, was inspired as Gary was just sharing uh, that I wrote down was I think Bill Gates is going to have you broadcast globally using holograms, you know, the new new technology. I mean, what you're sharing is so profound, James, <laughs> so profound. And I don't know how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen, but that's what I was hearing. And I want to say thank you, too. We're not going to call it quits right now. I want to thank, say thank you to each of you who's chosen to be part of the Soaring family, be it the Soaring 77 family, the Soaring 222, the Soaring 333. We are so thankful that you chose to invest your time, your money, your energy, your talents to be part of this, for the way you've been interacting, because your gifts have made this possible. And so just thank you. James, you can go on. Well, that same week, that, that first weekend in Chicago, I have a dear friend in Louisiana named Betty Love, who's a, a, a powerful minister, and she called me. She said, James, I, I have to relay this story to you. Uh, I had this family come, and they have a little boy named Trace, and he was three years old at the time, and they said for two weeks, now mind you, we've been in Chicago, this was our first week there, first weekend, and, and this little boy, they said, been talking about Chicago for two weeks. He says he's three years old. He don't. He's never been to Chicago. We have no relationship to Chicago. So last Saturday, he spent the whole day building with his blocks. And we asked him what he was doing. He said he was helping the Lord rebuild the city of Chicago. And so, what I want to say to you, out of the it says in Romans eight two, out of the mouths of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou might still the enemy and the avengers. So I'm saying that in this kingdom age. These little guys, just the way we're seeing what we don't understand, and we're just, you know, moving as children uh, in holy knowings, these guys are doing the same thing. So uh, there are no, there is no junior Holy Spirit. You know, he's, he's as big as them as he is in us. And so, uh, and actually out of the pureness of their hearts, they're just moving with him and building with him. And, and so I thought that was a very, uh, I was just so overwhelmed by, by what Father's doing in these little guys now. And so we've not begin to see how he's going to move with them yet either, I, I, I don't believe. So uh, next slide, please, I guess. Now, my, my very first week in Chicago, the next, on a Sunday night, I started to speak and at the End Time Handmaidens, and the, this lady handed me an article, and she says, you know, uh, you're, you're here in, in, in 2013, uh, Actually, 2012 we were, but uh, she says a hundred years ago, Marie Ruth Eder came to this city in July and was supposed to be here for three days, but after three days, the glory was so powerful that the meeting lasted six months. And at that time, they didn't have microphones, they would, so they would cut holes in the sanctuary floor so that people in the basement could hear. And they said that uh, at the end of the meeting, she got up and prophesied about. And sometime at the end of that six month period, she said, What we're experiencing in 1913 is the latter rain. But a uh, hundred years from now, the former and the latter rain are coming. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? And, and so, uh, so I'm saying to you, we've entered into that. Even in this year with all the flooding, there was a, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
Chuck Pierce had talked about uh, the Mark Quirit floods because with the floods, the glory is going to, Holy Spirit is going to just invade those places. Well, look at Texas now. Look at Oklahoma and all these places. Now, we've moved to this slide. In, 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 in Chicago, uh, on about the second week it was, uh, we were in this uh, African-American church, and, and uh, what happened is in a lot of African-American churches, and not just African-American, but churches in general, we've had people who it's like been a talking head kind of atmosphere in other words we got we got the leader but in the whole congregation uh, they listen but they never have a voice but I'm saying to you now Bill Hammond prophesied the, the, the Saints movement he he used to prophesy it's coming I'm saying it's here and it's time where uh, don't just let your congregation not have a voice but be interested in what they're saying but anyway as we started having letting the congregations loose that night and, and blessing their voice they, they said this, one guy said, I saw uh, meteors coming, it, it, it looked like the apocalypse, and I, and I wanted to run, but I turned again, and these meteors were fiery angels. When the first wave hit the ground, they, they stood up and they blew these silver trumpets, and when they blew these trumpets, you could see the sound moving through the earth. Then a second line of angels came, and they pulled back these bowls. They had no arrows in them, but as soon as they pulled the arrow back, the string back, a golden arrow filled the bow. And when they released it, they shot it, and you could track it. And when it landed, it caused portals to explode in, in the earth of light. Well, that night in, in, in the newspapers, they had reported that fireballs were seen all over that the Chicago area. And even where we were at, they sent police because they thought a plane had crashed because they, there was this fiery uh, manifestation. But nobody could find the plane crash, and, and they, they, couldn't, they didn't, couldn't talk about what was happening. They didn't know what caused the, the fireballs. But I'm saying to you that the angels are moving, and so watch for these signs and wonders. Now, the next week, we were in a small Hispanic church, probably about 15 people, uh, and, and uh, there was this little boy named Alec there, and he was four years old when his mom and dad had separated, and, but, but so we had one of our team was like a grandfather, and so Alec, every time that grandfather would come in, he would just grab a hold of him and hug him, and so about the third night, they're sitting on the back row, and Alec says to my friend Tim, he says, sure is getting crowded in here, and Tim says, oh, what do you mean, son, and he said, well, can't you see him? He said, the angels are here. So I'm just saying to you, watch out for them. They're here and, and welcome the movement of the angels. So, Father, we thank you that it's the, the sons of God moving with the armies of heaven. And we thank you as the little bitty intercessors and, and the cloud of witnesses and the angelic host. And it's the sons all moving as one in, 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 in the kingdom age. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I'm going to just read just a few comments people are making. Levon uh, Luck says, amen about no junior Holy Spirit. So true. And then she says, wow, wow, wow. Sheila says, yes, indeed, this has been a glory explosion. Mary Alice Birch says, do you have any idea how thankful we are? So just thank you. And Brianna Christine says, so wow. In big love, as Abba has been doing this with me, glory to his name. Yes, Lord. we have a bunch of people saying thank you, and you know, anyway, go ahead and keep on going. Uh, let's go see where we're going next because I don't know. Joseph, oh, Pam, Pam has a Pam has a comment. Pam, please speak up. Thank you, Simone. I've just got something to share about my grandchildren. Um, I've just been sharing with them about the Lord for a while now, and the paintings that he's been sharing with me actually speaking to my grandchildren. And like you were saying about that of the males with babes, I was sharing with my granddaughter, my eldest granddaughter, this is a, about a month ago, um, about how the paintings speak. And she actually got a scripture at the same time as what I was sharing with her, the painting. So she said, Nanny, that's from this scripture. I said, yes, it is. So um, the, um, the Lord is speaking through the children immensely, isn't he? And um, the Holy Spirit is is in, in their hearts. And he's just, yeah, and the angels, yeah. What you were sharing about the angels, James, with the fire and, yep, amazing. Amen. Amen. Uh, I just heard in my spirit as I'm just hearing that Australian accent to call on Sheila Ryan. Sheila, you're unmuted here right now. Uh, we love you, Sheila. You know, we were talking about you behind your back with the Power 2000 team. How we want Gary to host you on a webinar, you know. And, oh. you know, <laughs> so, you share your story. Oh, wow. Sheila, let's have you share. 
can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, well, you know, I'm glad this happened at 6 o'clock in the morning because I'm in bed because I couldn't stand. <laughs> I've, just, I've just been laid out totally whacked and over, overawed and excited and overjoyed. And, you know, that this um, is coming out, this message. And, James, your, your paintings are so powerful. I look at them as an amateur artist and I'm overawed. And I just, I'm going to take this webinar to my tribe, to my church. I can't, even before you said it, Joseph, it was in my heart. I have got to show it to them because um, what you're sharing is so powerful and um, it's presented so beautifully. Um, and there's so much of it, I, I couldn't even take it in, but I just had my hand over my mouth the whole time. It's so extraordinary what you're releasing. You are actually releasing a glory explosion right now. and. Um, releasing hope and just wow for the age that we live in it's just one of the most exciting and precious moments to be able to live in and I just thank you I just thank you and Gary and Joseph and each one of you for what you've brought um, to the nations and um, it's just going to expand I just bless each one of you with everything that's within me I thank you and I thank you on behalf of the Father and he is just so overwhelmed and overjoyed at what you have shared and given each one of you, your lives, right back from the very moment of time when he created you. Yeah, just thank you, and I bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Father, with precious words. As you were sharing about, you know, wanting to share this with your church, I said, I believe the Lord's challenging all of us to do that. Right, not just you know share it by email or yeah. Facebook, but to actually have a live gathering and to watch this together and let yeah, people, you can pause it and let let there be explosions of holy knowing while people are watching. That's what God wants to release in this earth, not just yeah, people to be watching. Yeah, I've already Yes, <laughs> I've already got that picture. I can see what's already happening in the. Ch yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, thank you, Joseph. That's just and thank you for your. Both of you, for your generosity, you know, that's, I've already planned it. <laughs> Bless you. Well, while I was listening to this, I heard that this is to be my Sabbath inspiration. You know, I've been doing Sunday inspirations, but God wants my, you know, the weekly inspirations to come into alignment with his calendar. Hmm. But this video, James, will be going out to my 9,000 or so uh, oh, yeah. followers. So, um, yeah, God wants to multiply this message. Amen. You know, a, amen. Amen. Gary, let's just get your feedback, and then we'll have, um, we'll have James move on. Thank you so much, Sheila. That was beautiful. Everything you expressed is just beautiful. It's what we're all sensing and feeling. Um, you know, James, I really believe what you've expressed today is where the Lord is taking the church, the body of Christ. We just have not seen this. We've talked about it. We've tried to put words to it. You have you have hit the mark today on what worship will become, on what gatherings will become, uh, where the heaven is truly opened. It will only open further. But we have now seen a glimpse clearer than we've ever seen uh, that is now. So thank you. Wow. Thank you, Lord. It's an honor <laughs> uh, to be with you. Uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, Thank you. All I can say is thank you for taking the my artwork where it was twisted. It's not, <laughs> you know, Father, we just stop. And for those artists who are still in that twisted state, Lord, no matter what it is, you've got so much more for them, Lord. And they're made to unlock light in people's lives and, and, and to unlock your goodness to them, Lord. And yet in their own selves, they need to touch your goodness today. We thank you for what used to satisfy them, just not satisfying them no more. So we call every artist out of darkness into light. We we call them, Lord. Uh, we thank you for as a, a day of the mercy of, of 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 for them, Lord. Whether they be no matter what kind of artist, Lord, we we bless them to 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 find you in today in this. Let let it be a let, let it be a glory explosion for artists all over the earth. Is what we would be our heart. In Jesus name. And and, and while, while we're here, we might as well just 
release this one. I, I believe what's happening right now is that the, 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 the kingdom is so uh, coming, the, the veil is getting so thin that the second heavens, the darkness you're seeing it in, invade uh, groups like ISIS and, 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 and those. But the answer is to release light into that darkness because we wrestle not with flesh and blood and principal structures of, of darkness can't stand blood-bought light in their foundation. And it's just like I believe it was the same way as when Gideon smashed the, 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 the clay jars and, and they were blinded and attacked themselves. So Father, today, again, we thank you that, that the army of the sons are rising. That is the answer to ISIS, not a natural army. Uh, but 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 the the army that releases light into the darkness of the powers and principalities behind ISIS that cause them to turn upon themselves, and we call for all those bloodlines that are ensnared in that mentality of ISIS even now, Father, you've not made them for that. So we thank you for we 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 release light into those bloodlines into those family trees, and especially the king. God, we're asking for the kingpins of ISIS to be invaded. And Lord, to be called out of darkness. We're thanking you, Father, for their, their command structure to crumble. And Lord, we bless you and thank you for those powers and principalities being visited with blood-covered judgment and justice. In Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. 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 As you're just praying that prayer, you know what I'm just hearing too is that that in these countries that are experiencing severe terrorism right now, they will be watching this broadcast too. And it's just going to be in groups. And there's just going to be such an explosion, you know, of holy knowing and God's glory, the glory train just coming in, the freedom train just being ushered in, you know, the awakening train, you know, being ushered in, you know, just praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. This is a picture of what we've just prayed. The armies of heaven and the sons on the earth, darkness is dispelled through the sounds of the sons. So, Father, we thank you. You know, Saul, Saul was a terrorist. You know, and he had a, he got knocked off his donkey on the way to Damascus. Lord, let, let, let Syria be filled with Damascus Road experiences today. Thank you, Father, for knocking. And Saul was a kingpin as well. Lord, so we thank you for knocking kingpins off of their donkey today, Lord. And we thank you just to turn Saul's into Paul's. Let it be a wave of those angels that release that sound that shakes. Let there be a shaking of ISIS today because of leaders that have not been taken out by, by a drone but by been taken out by an encounter with eternal light. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Yes. So it's really the dance of the two camps, the camp of heaven with the camp of men. And so I've been saying it in all these different ways today, but uh, I've been trying to show it every way I know how so that we can, we can own it together, that the sons of men and the, the, the angel armies, uh, this is the moment when we come together and dance as one. I've even seen meetings where I've had a, a dancer dancing the most beautiful things, and she says, well, I said, what were you doing? She says, well, I've been watching the angel dance, and I've just been doing what I've seen them do. And I believe it's vice versa. I, I believe as you're dancing, angels are moving in as a mirror image of you as well. Uh, but it is the dance of the two camps. Next slide, please. And I think it's, yes. Th this, this is a, a picture, I think, of, of, of where we're at. Uh, this, th now, David, in his time frame, he, he was a worshiper, and he was worshiping in a system, and then he saw 1,500 years into the future, and he began to move in sounds that weren't even supposed to be in his time frame. Uh, and so what we're doing is we're standing in our time frame in now sound, and we know that the end of the book, there is no ISIS. We know that the end of the book, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So we're calling the end of the book into our time frame. Actually, it's the time frame of eternal now. And it all comes through the blood of the Son. He is the Alpha and Omega. So it's through that bloodline that we're releasing this sound. So everything that we see in our generations that was out of alignment, we put the blood on that and bring repentance for it as he brings it to light. And what we're doing is we're calling every ge our generations to come. You know, in the scripture where uh, Samson took the jawbone uh, and he slew all those, uh, I think it was, was it Philistines that he was slaying there? It said right after that that a fountain was opened 
open that generations would drink from. So what we want to do is at every gathering that we have, we want to strike the ground so hard that fountains are open that generations will drink from. It would be my prayer that this meeting this afternoon is one of those that we're striking the ground so hard that generations will drink from the truth of what's being released here. And so that he who was and is and is to come is, is, is manifesting now, yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same in now sound. He's doing it right now. Is that making sense to you there? Yes. So it's another way to say what I've been saying. Uh, next slide, please. And so again, I, I wanted to come back to this, and before I, and if we if we need to quit here, we can quit here. But I got one more thing we can talk about if you want to. Uh, so let, let's say it again. The Earth has never experienced this now. I don't care. Don't let's don't go by our history. The Earth has never experienced the sound of the army of mature sons, in a line with heaven, as Lance Wallenau puts it, as one, in releasing the power and order of eternal decree. So that that is this is that. So we can go to the next thing, Joseph. Or you want me to quit here? I can quit here. Whatever you want me. To. We definitely want you to go on, but I heard something else in my spirit. I'm going to ask Steve Schultz to do uh, an email uh, announcing this video replay, audio replay, to let his whole audience know. You know, of 155,000. You know, God is stirring up something huge. Stirring up something huge. Praise the Lord. Thank you. For it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, when we were looking at my DNA earlier, did you notice that the color was all blue, uh, uh, mostly blue? I never saw that before until on this broadcast today. But Ray Hughes and I had been talking for a couple of years. He had always had uh, this assignment in his heart about going to all the places where the sound of the blues was released and going that as redeemed sons and releasing uh, 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 the, 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 the sound of the new day in those portals because those sounds opened up portals. And so uh, what I've been doing the last couple of years, uh, I've been trying to be the feet. Uh, you know, Ray, he always wanted to go through Kentucky up the Highway 68 and release glory fires because every fire that happened in Kentucky, every revival happened along Highway 68. So last year we took a worship journey and did that. So this year, I wanted to honor him by something he didn't have time to do. We gathered a team of worshipers, and we've been going to all these places that have been uh, seed beds for the blues. But we, we're going, see, there are no blues in heaven. So what we're doing is releasing the, 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 the glory of the blue note, or, or, or the revelation of the color blue uh, into every bloodline and family tree. So if you go to the next slide, I, I'd just like to talk about that for just a minute. Uh, now, so when we talk about the color blue, it, 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 it represents the moving of Holy Spirit. Blue also represents revelation. It's also a color of trust, peace, order, loyalty, royalty, and justice. So as we're going there and worshiping, our, our, our position is, and, and our intent is, remember, intent is a powerful force. And so our intent is to release the fullness of this color into every bloodline so they can awaken to revelation of what their bloodline is supposed to be. Any trust issues can be healed. Or they, Because when you sing the blues, you're not singing out of trust. You're singing out of broken relationships and, 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 and no peace. And, and so we're releasing these things. Uh, so that's what this assignment we're carrying in our heart. Next slide, please. So these are the cities. We started in Charleston, then we went to Muscle Shoals, then we went to uh, uh, New Orleans, then we went to Memphis, then we went to uh, up the Delta. To uh, And so this is a blue journey. This is a map of it. But we're about halfway through now. We'll be in St. Louis in a week or two. But I want to show you that something happened on this journey. Every time you walk on the land, uh, the land will, will reveal things to you that you didn't see before you got on the land. Uh, next slide, please. So we pray for the army of sons now to be sensitive in listening to the land. But now, here's what we didn't know. Uh, we went to a place in, in Charleston, South Carolina. The reason we went there is Ray told us that there's a lady named Charlotte Fortin. She was a, a teacher from Philadelphia who came to minister to the to, to, to slaves there. And, and she, while she was there, she heard a man getting beaten. And as she said, it made her feel blue. So she published that in a poem. But here's what I didn't know. Sullivan Island in Charleston, South Carolina, from 1700 to 1790, 70 to 80% of African Americans came through this gate 
Now, picture yourself at home in West Africa. You're having dinner with your family. You've done it for as long as you can remember. There's joy at your table. There's dreams that you have for your children. All of a sudden, somebody breaks into your home. Now, this wasn't white people who broke into their homes. This is other tribals, black folks that came in, black on black crime, and stole these people and marched them to the sea and sold them to white folks. And then they put them on a ship and, and, and sent them to, uh, uh, and they landed on Sullivan's Island. Now, when they get to this island, their dreams are gone, their songs gone, all they know is loss, and the gate of every cell within them has no joy, has no dance, and no hope. That was the sound on that island. And that's where they would separate the families to weaken them on purpose, separate the males from the females, and for separate them from market. And so the future of their bloodlines or the fragrance and the fruit of the family trees was gone. A trauma that still re resounds within the bowels of our nation as it does the state of agitation or depression on every reservation in the land. What I'm saying to you now, though, we had the privilege of standing on that island and every bloodline that had ever been connected to there, we had to call them into the glory of the blue note and the glory of what Father has intended. Not So it's time for the song. He knew that they were going to wind up here. So in his goodness, he still has a plan for that song to rise in this land. So I'm saying to you, in, in this season, you know, and, and uh, maybe I'll be waiting talk about that. But anyway, I'm saying to you, in this season, a part of the awakening train, the freedom train, is all these bloodlines awakening to original intent and, the, and move in Father's dream. That's what we found that we didn't know was in Charleston, South Carolina. Next slide, please. This is, and then, but then Father interrupted us. In, in addition to this, you're not just doing the blue journey, but he, he, we just got finished with a 9,500-mile journey called Whirlwind West. Because, it, it, and I didn't, when we were in Louisiana, we happened to be there uh, uh, on a, I was, it was there a, a bunch of days lined up. I can't talk to you all about all that. But, but we happened to be there the week that the Louisiana Purchase was signed, you know, all those years ago. And, and, but then the Lord sent us to Louisiana Purchase Territory, releasing the bloodline sounds. Now, if you've ever been in a meeting with me, you know that I'm very interested in what people's names mean. Because I believe part of the whole John 10.10 10 is the enemy. First of all, most folks don't even know what their name means. And so the very first lady that we, we called out, actually the first one was warrior, but the next one was blind and bitter. Now, if your name is Mary, you know that Mary means bitter. But here's the good news about that. If your name is Mary, it means that you have a grace to release bitterness from the land. That's what your name means. You have a grace to minister to everybody around you. And if your name is Mary, you watch. Bitter people come to you. Now, you've got a choice to make. You can stay in bitterness, but if you're redeemed, you can come out of bitterness and flip that around on the enemy and turn it around. But what I know was that bitterness keeps people in blindness. And so on this journey out west, I cannot tell you how many times bitterness came up in that journey. So it lets me know the native people, the bitterness of the trauma that they've experienced has blinded many to who their identity is, which is why suicide has been running rampant among the children there. But now it is the time for all these native men that are warriors to arise out of that into the glory of what they were created for. So... This is a part of our assignment for this year. It might not be of interest to you, but it's of interest to me, so I'm sharing it with you. And so releasing the song of the bloodlines. That's what's happening in the earth now. It's the song of the blood that's releasing the song of the bloodlines, and the heavenly anthem is drowning all music, but it's all. Now let me tell you one story about... Uh, it, after we went to South Carolina, we went right in the middle to Muscle Shows. Now, many of you have heard of Muscle Shows, Alabama, because it's where Wilson Pickett and Aretha Franklin and all these groups came. They released the sound from there. But what I didn't know was it's called the Land of the Singing River. And in 1830, whenever Andrew Jackson made a law that all the natives had to be moved west of the Mississippi, two young girls hid. They were sisters. And when they found them, they took their names and they gave them a brass badge. On one side it said U.S., on the other side it had number 59 and 60. One of them's names, one of those girls' names was Taylor Nay. When they forced marched her to Oklahoma, when she got there, she said, you know what? The rivers don't sing here 
and if I stay here, I'll die. I have to go back home to where the river sings. And the Tennessee River is known as the Singing River. And so this girl, it took her five years to walk back home to where the river sang. But when she got back home, the only reason we know this story that her great-great-grandson has spent the last 35 years of his life building a wall of honor. And every he's laid stones for every footstep that his great-grandmother walked back home. He's laid a stone representing that footstep for her. Here you go again, the generations, one honoring the next, unlocking the glory of that generation. So when we were there, we, 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 we wanted, before we could enter that land, I want to ask his permission to release our sound because he is a gatekeeper of sound in that territory. And so we honored him. And in that honor, he allowed us to, to release our sound. So there's a whole much more of that story, but I just want to, he wore out, I think, 86 wheelbarrows and 35,000 pairs of gloves or somewhat ridiculous amount, you know what I'm saying? But, but uh, that's what honor does in the land. Next slide, please. I'm going to finish with this because I've gone long enough. Here we are, Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you ancient biting doors. The King of Glory has come. He, just welcome, in the, welcome him into your bloodline. Welcome him to, to come in, in every gate in your house. Any gate that, that bitterness is held shut, say, Lord, I, I'm done with that. I apply the blood to every gate post of my life and my family and, I, and to my city and to my country. So, Father, we thank you that we welcome the King of Glory through the gate. And we thank you that when you come, you, 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 you are light. So we cannot help but have a holy explosion of holy knowing. So we praise you, Lord, that as we welcome you through the gates, that, that the explosions of holy knowing are filling the earth now. And everywhere they go, your dream is manifesting. So we praise you, Father, for, for your goodness to all of us. So we thank you for what we've had opportunity to uh, share here today. And we thank you uh, for, we commit our way to you for the next step. We don't know what that is, but we, we, we say the Lord bless you. The Lord is keeping you. The Lord is causing his face to shine on you. And the Lord has been, is, and is going to be very, very gracious to us. And the light of your countenance, Lord, is shining on the earth now. And you said the knowledge of you will cover the earth as the glory, as the waters cover the sea. And we thank you that we're in that process right now. Lord, we thank you for your shalom, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken, filling the bloodlines of the earth. So I thank you for the honor of being uh, being able to sit at the same table with Joseph Peck and Gary Beaton and Glenessa Stolfer and Lynn Lee and, and Pam Finley. I thank you for being a part of this council today through the blood of the Son. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Glory, glory, glory. Glenessa, I'd like to just give your feedback. I'd like you to say a prayer for James and what he's doing and for our audience, you know, and not just the ones that are live on the call, but the hundreds of thousands or millions that will listen to this replay. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, first, James, I just really want to thank you from the depths of my heart because you have just spoken the Father's heart to his people. And I believe that every single one of us on this call have received there a fresh vision of their assignments because we've been all given an assignment of the Father and every single one of us, our sound truly matters. Yes. Our voice matters and our voice have been silent. But I believe that today our voices shall be heard as one. There will be one voice that is being raised up and coming out of every single person in this call. And even those who will hear and continue to hear, there is a sound that's reverberating throughout, throughout the nations that is going to go out from this call. And even as you were speaking, the, I was even re received to myself a, a, a scroll of an assignment that I need to move forward and to, move, to release. And so I just thank you for speaking 
and for releasing the sound that came out of your spirit. It's just such a heart of the Father. It's like the wells and the rivers have just been opened up, and it's flowing from the very throne of God. So I just want to just release God's anointing impartation over the people to be able to speak forth and let your voice be heard. To rise up and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Release the blue sound. Release the sound to bring healing to the nations. Let the voice of power grow forth. Let there be an awakening that stirs the heart of the people of God. Let the army of God begin to rise up and take their position and let their shields be locked into place as you march forward with power to take the land for the glory of God. Rise up, mature sons. Rise up, you mighty army in this season. Rise up and take your place, for the Lord has been waiting for such a time as this when you will step forward. He has been waiting, and the voice and the sound of the trumpet has gone forth. The sound of the turtle dove is in the land. Rise up. Rise up and go forth, people. Rise up. Rise up. Hear the sound. 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 <laughs> Hear the sound! Oh, let the roar come out of your belly. Let the sound come out of your belly. Oh, let the sound come forth. Join with the holy. Join with the holy sound. Join with the seven lamps burning before the throne. Join with the sound. The sound of the four living creatures around the throne. Join in. The face of the lion, the eagle, the ox, and the man. There is a movement that we have never heard or never seen before, but it is here and it is now. Step into your place. Lock shields together and move as one. As one. As one voice. As one holy voice. As one holy fire in the land. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Gary, I would like you to uh, say a prayer, uh, too. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, for just overwhelming us with your glory, with your presence, with your tangible love. Thank you for giving us such understanding. You said, I has not seen neither has ear heard nor has entered into the heart of man the things which you have prepared for those who love you. Yet this is a day that you're releasing those things, the freedom train. We receive it. We receive from this abundance. We receive your lightning. We receive the breaker. We receive the glorious sound from heaven invading earth, the sons of God rising up, Thank you for imagery, for opening our eyes to see, our ears to hear, collectively, supernaturally. Thank you for lives being transformed, cities being transformed, new opportunities, bloodlines cleansed. Thank you, Father, for that sound of the blue note. Thank you, Jesus, for revelations we have never heard before, but you meant for it to be released throughout the world today in a crescendo. You are the Maestro Holy Spirit. We just welcome you now. Thank you for opening these doors, these windows of heaven. Thank you our lives will never be the same as of today. Thank you for the breaker, releasing people from lives of bondage, chains they've never been able to be free from. Thank you for joyful sound to wake anew and afresh. Thank you, Jesus just for your goodness. Thank you for the keys of the kingdom that you've entrusted those to us. And thank you, Father, that 
you make us like little children again. And you entrust us with these things, the knowledge of the holy. Thank you for purity through the blood. Yes, Lord. Thank you for such deep understanding. What a banqueting table. Thank you, Jesus. All we want is more. And even beyond that, we just want all of you. So come, come, drench the earth. Thank you for the knowledge of the glory covering the earth as the waters covering the seas, that that day is upon us. It is now. It is now. And we rejoice to see this day with you. We just give you glory, Lord. I thank you for every voice, every heart, every family listening. I thank you, Jesus, for your goodness and meeting everyone face to face and turning lives around, doing miracles that seem impossible right now, healing bodies of diseases. Nothing is impossible if you believe. Thank you. You said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Thank you that faith has been released today throughout the earth. Faith and a new sound of heaven, the sound of the holy. Thank you, Jesus. We just give you the greatest glory, the greatest praise. You said, if I be lifted up, I would draw all men to me. Thank you for these angels, these great mighty ones who surround us and do your bidding. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us how to just walk with them and uh, how to work with them, Father, in the divine, in these dimensions, so that we might accomplish your will in the earth with all fervency of heart. Jesus, we bless your great and mighty name today. Amen. Amen. So God just went from Glenessa's prayer from Canada to Gary on the east coast of the United States, and we're going to hop across the pond to Europe. To Lynn, we're going to ask you to say a prayer too. So we're doing the continents. We're doing the continents here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Father, thank you for the new portals that have been opened today for the new doors that have been opened that will not shut, for eyes to see, for ears to hear. Thank you for washing us, for refreshing us, mm -hmm. for renewing us, for remaking us. And thank you for giving us a new song to sing, a new song that we will sing loud and clear. Thank you for giving us a song that adds to the symphony, adds to the symphony. We are, we are, I'm speechless. I am just so grateful, so very, very grateful to have been part of the treasure that has been released today. Thank you that we will never, ever, ever be the same again. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Covenant Connections, that's what's happening here, Covenant Connections. Pam, let's have you um, say a prayer, and then we're going to, or we'll have you say another one, James, and we'll close out. So. I'm really lost for words here, but this has just been an amazing morning here in Australia, here all over the world, and Lord, just what Len was saying, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand. A clean heart, Lord, a pure heart. Yeah. Renew in us a pure heart, Lord. It's submissive to you, Lord, and releasing that sound of heaven. We're just the release of your sound, Lord, just all over the earth, transforming lives, transforming communities, in the young and the old. He's just moving in all spheres of the earth, and I just thank you, Lord, for the goodness, for your goodness and your graciousness. And I just honour you, Lord, and I give you all the praise and all the glory. You're an amazing God, and I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Gary, 
Thank you, thank you. Gary's raised his hand. Thank you. Father, I just want to bless you and, and wrap this part up by thanking you. We all thank you, Heavenly Father, for James Nesbitt. Yes. Thank you for this humble man. Thank you for his obedience. Thank you for his pure heart. Thank you, Father, for the life lessons he shared today on yes. twisting his name, being able to teach us our names, our lives can be untwisted and used for your glory. Thank you for the courage and obedience to travel all the thousands of miles he's traveled, Father, with your heartbeat to change a nation. Yes. Thank you, Father, for those who have joined with him. And we, whether we've been part of these meetings or not, we feel that we're part of this journey today. But God, we just honor you. We honor this humble servant of God who's been faithful, Father. I thank you. Uh, there's such tremendous power in me and impurity and simplicity and such a tender heart. Father, he models a Christ. So we just honor you today. We honor James. We just speak protection over his family, his life, the length of days that he'd have an increase of length of days. I thank you for his spiritual sons and daughters, that there will be many and they will rise up uh, and call him blessed. I thank you for the work of his hands. I thank you that you'd multiply uh, everything he's sown out, that it begin to come back in great ways he could not take in. Jesus, multiply. You're such a God of multiplication. I pray all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 be upon him. I just thank you for a life example we can all look to. And Father, I just uh, we commit this time to you and just thank you that you have chosen to do this today. And, and created uh, and revealed a diamond. We just, with many facets, we just give you glory and praise. Thank you for Joseph Peck. Thank you, Father. None of this would be possible without him uh, being who he is and doing what he's done. Thank you for the, the calling upon his life. I thank you for the great things you have in store ahead, great expansion. We give you all this glory. Uh, and all this praise, Jesus, it all goes to you because you're our king, you're our only king, and you're our savior yes. in your, your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. This is going to be the most popular video we've ever produced by far, James. You know, you can't plan for something to go viral. You can make plans and try. But there's different things have gone viral over the time. But when the Holy Spirit really gets hold of something like that, when he authors the he's the one that's authored this message and you've shared it. He's, you know, you stewarded it and shared it, and we thank you for that. I was thinking as Gary was praying, and with that other image, you know, of connecting around the world, you traveled over a month about nine or ten thousand miles. But today you traveled over 20,000 miles in a couple hours. <laughs> and what prayer is for communication in the spiritual realm, the Internet is for communication in the natural realm. And so God's letting you travel without the effort, without the work, and compressing the time frame. And so what you've been doing over all these years is just, it, it's, it's, it's being communicated so much faster, so much faster. And your sons and daughters are growing so much faster exponentially than they were as Gary was just praying. So praise God for that. We thank, and as Gary was praying things like the Deuteronomy 28 blessings, I was thinking Deuteronomy 28 blessings, the fullness of obedience, about five seconds before he prayed it. And about three other times when he was getting ready to pray something, it was in my spirit already, and then he prayed that same thing. So Holy Spirit was all over it. So just thank, and I thank Gary for your obedience and stepping into this for traveling. You know, you've gone around to these different cities and these nations in obedience, and you've released the blood of Jesus Christ. So thank you for your obedience. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, 
you know, for just the many ways you've helped me, you know, uh, get to where I am and for preparing the coaching guys in Glenessa. I know that these global prayer calls are, are <laughs> they're mounting up wings like eagles. <laughs> I can't wait for those to start. And Pam, thank you for that, your obedience. Thank you, Simone and Carleen, and each of you in the audience. We're just so grateful. We almost all of you have stuck in here for the for the whole duration. James, do you have anything you want to say before we wrap it up? We've got to wrap it up in two minutes. I just want to pray this. Father, I thank you for Joseph Peck's dream, Lord, that we had a this, that his dream made a vehicle for this today. But Lord, uh, we thank you for all those that we don't know and we might never meet them. Lord, there, there are dreams there that the enemy's tried to steal and cover up and put dust on. We pray today that dreams, there would be a wind blow. That would, that, that would blow the dust off of dreams and, and, and blow the doubt away and, and things, Lord, where people, it might seem, the thing they might be doing might be small, it might seem tedious, it might be hard. But Lord, whatever they're doing, we thank you there is no small step of obedience. As we bless them, Lord, and we thank you there is no small prayer meeting. So those who are praying and it's small, God, we, we thank you for blessing uh, what, what to them seems small. Thank you for showing them today that it's not small, it's very, very big. So, Lord, we just bless uh, those who have been struggling, and they've even, the enemy's trying to, to get them out of position by, by, by making them lose hope. God, we thank you today that hope deferred is being broken in two. And, God, we thank you for a wind of joy coming through our time together. Let everyone who views this video, let a, a joy grip them, a strength that's from on high. Because your joy is all of our strength. So we praise you, Father, today for this moment where each of us have joined together uh, and, and, our, and our lights have become brighter because we're, we're, we're shining your glory together, reflecting off each other. And we pray that they will be multiplied thousands upon thousands of times as this video is viewed through the blood of the Son. Yes. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God. Holy, holy, holy. So, the hosts in heaven are rejoicing. The people on earth are rejoicing. We just give thanks to you, Father God, for this incredible opportunity to partner with you. We look forward to connecting with each of you again next week, same time, same channel, the Destiny Channel. God is breathing his Zoe life into your dreams. And we thank you that you said yes to his invitation, the Holy Spirit invitation. There is no junior spirit. The same Holy Spirit that's within James Nesbitt is within each of you. And God wants his glory to reveal the Lion of Judah is in your heart. And so let it be manifest. Let it be expressed. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being part of the Soaring family. We look forward to connecting again. Goodbye and blessings to all of you from our family. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.